The following program is rated TV MAL. It contains strong language and is intended only for mature audiences. Baby, right on time. Woo! Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Gary yeah. arrived during the credits. During the credits, that's on time. Like a thief in the night. Like a thief in the night. Like like a thief in the night. Like Zorbu rolling in the probia. I want Kelly there so I can just massage his skull. There you go. There he you has, go. He has beautiful mm. hair. Yes, he does have beautiful hair. And and you don't. <laughs> <laughs> but between Kelly's hair and my hair, we got I, something. It balances I mean, out. I don't think yeah, I'd look that's as me. Good. <laughs> I wouldn't look as good bald as 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 though. I I must confess, I think I have a really good shaped hair. Dude, for, dude for you would look guy. you would look weird with hair. Okay, <laughs> you would just look weird with hair. I you you have a yeah. You don't have like a cone head ball. It's not like yeah. lumpy or any. Yeah, it's it's like no, it's just it's, it's proper Professor X. Yeah, Doctor yeah, yeah. Evil bald. There yeah. you go. Yeah, if they ever reboot <laughs> Next Evil. Generation, <laughs> I'm going in. For, I'm going in. Thanks, I'm Bobby. going in for it. Yeah, I'm gonna be Deanna Troy. Mm -hmm. That's right. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the real BBC. I mean, has proper Sinead O'Connor bald. Sinead. 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 R I P. Sneed O'Connor. R.I.P. Nothing compares Sinead. to you. Hey, her first no. album, Lion and the Cobra, pretty damn good, dude. Good I stuff. always I always loved her uh doing heroin with the edge. That was that was my yeah, favorite. that was uh and the song. Yep. Yeah, uh yep. so that, that was her debut song, right? Yep. And she was discovered by David Gilmore from Pink yeah. Floyd. That's yes, cool. she was that that's a great song. That's my favorite one she did. It's a good one. Yeah. Yeah, it was a break. I guess I can get on camera now. Hello. As you can see, we have a very special guest here yeah. today. But first, before we get to that, uh, Gary, how you doing? Uh, I'm busy because uh, traveling was horrible, horrible, utterly horrible. I'm, I'm done with local flying. If it's within 20 hours, I'm driving. I'm not getting on these crappy little planes anymore. <laughs> Dude, I'm just done. I'm just effing done. I'll go to Egypt. I'll go to the UK. Lebanon. You, oh, <laughs> the, that that part of the trip is probably not going to happen. The Lebanon oh, okay. trip is is looking like it's not going to happen. But um, I hear Israel's lovely this time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, um, got on a Southwest plane, so I was delayed longer than my actual flight on the way there. Then we oh. sat on the way back. We sat on the tarmac for an hour, and when we got back, mm. uh, when we got in, uh, we found out why we were on the tarmac for an hour because we were flying in a in a fucked up plane, <laughs> and they took it out of service as soon as we were done. I'm like, I'm done. That's it. That's it. Never getting one of these death <laughs> ah. traps again. Yeah. No. 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 And and I'm 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 sitting in between like two ladies, right? But like, because it was first come, first come, serve seating. So my wife's behind me. I'm sitting mm. between two attractive ladies, right? And I'm oh. like, I don't want to touch them accidentally at all. So I'm like sitting there like like a fucking turtle watching like The Hobbit on my phone. Uh, you should have. Even, I, I, I should have. I should have been like fucking man spreading. <laughs> but uh, I didn't want to be that guy. 
So, yeah, it was fucking terrible. I fucking hated it. Mm-hmm. The plane smelled. It was awful. I, uh, you know what? I'm going to sound like a, a fucking YouTuber. It's first class or business class or nothing for this oh. kid. <laughs> Fuck that shit. I'm done. You've changed. I've changed. No, You've I've always changed. hated flying. I've hated flying since day one. I still hate flying. I will always hate flying. It's a horrible experience. The whole going through an airport and standing in line and waiting for hours it reminded me of prison. It reminds me of fucking prison. So I f- hate that, and I don't want to go through it. I'd rather get in a car and see the splendor of the American country. I only fly if my wife's handling it. She has to handle all of it and just treat me like a child going to kindergarten. I, mm. I, If I don't have to think, I think I can get through it, but it is... Uh, maddening. It's I, I I hate all the little deadlines. You have to get to the airport at a certain time. You have to go through the security. You have to get to the gate. You have to. It, it's too much of that. So I just want her to do all the thing, and she does. And then I just you know like a child wait for my turn. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 that's how my wife treats me, and I'm like a petulant child yes. while I'm there. I'm horrible. Well, as long so. as I'm given a snack, I'm okay. <laughs> mm. uh. Yeah, I like well, that. Some people can drink or get high. I have to go through all of this. <laughs> yeah. My wife's purse is a wonderland of goodies when we're flying. It's always- <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Don't quite know what to make of that, Kelly. Um, Mola, how are you doing? Oh, wonderful. I've been, I've been drowning in video games, trying to get yeah. ready for Alan Wake 2, which is going to be interesting. I didn't know you were actually going to play that. As well. it's like we've seen I about maybe. loved Alan Wake 1. When was the last time you played it? Uh, the last time I played it would be probably around 2016. Oh, yeah, fair enough. Um, I haven't really played it since 360 days, which mm-hmm. like talking like 2011, 10 sort of thing. This will be interesting, yeah. See what Alan Wake 2 has got. Did you know that Control is supposed to like cross over with Alan Wake as well? Um, the meant I know that they're meant to be in the same universe, yes. Uh, um. but I do have a an Alan Wake, uh, Collector's edition still factory sealed. Oh. Like a statue? Uh it's it's like a it's like a book. No, it's no sat it's like it's it's only like well one collector's editions weren't mental. It's just like a, a thick like a thicker almost the same size but a little bit bigger than the, the game, but it's got like a art book and, yeah, 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 yeah. But well, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's nice, and it comes out this Friday, by the way, folks. And I'll be playing it this Friday, and all during Friday night time. Anyway, um, we have a special <laughs> guest. Anything? No, sorry, Mola. Anything else? <laughs> Not really. I mean, <laughs> 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 it's weird when my job gets to the point where I'm like, as I'm struggling to complete video games to oh. be in time to complete video games. It's times like that, though, you have to just take a step back and go, God, I love what I do for a living. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Um, MCU? Yes, MCU. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Oh, my God. There it is, baby. Dude. (laughs) I've seen you tweet about it, Gary. The book is an interesting read, I assume. Uh, It is until the end, right? So there's some good... We'll we'll talk about it. We'll, Mm -hmm. we'll, We'll discuss. We'll discuss. Because it goes, like, straight... It. I think it's kind of written by Kevin Feige. <laughs> it feels like it's ghost written by Kevin Feige. It's not super critical of him ever. What a mm. surprise. That mm-hmm. does surprise me. And we have a very, very special guest today uh, returning. I'm very <laughs> happy to say as well uh, to the show uh, Batman cover artist Batman Internals Dead Man and just launched today brand new kickstarter dracula yes part one the impaler and doesn't he do a lot of that yes he does oh yeah. he, vlad was mad for it yes yes uh, so that we will be discussing that but first of all kelly welcome back to the show thank you thank you good to see you guys thanks for being here yeah I, uh, and who it's writes long. that book? Who writes that book? Uh, Matt Wagner. Matt Wagner. Matt F. And Wagner. Yeah. That's awesome. Grendel fame. A yeah. Genuine genius. Yes. Mm. Uh, we, we're going to go through that. Don't you worry. There's a nice little video to watch. I've already put my order in. I was back at number. Well, 
There was only one backer when I was getting my stuff. Oh, yeah, I haven't, I haven't backed it yet. Where's By the link? time I got my stuff, I think it was up to like 12. Where's yeah. And I was just like, I'm going to class myself as backer number two. Yes. <laughs> just from an intern, just from a, you know, selfish perspective. Uh, how you doing? Good, sir. Very good. Uh, it's 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 like a, a real whirlwind uh, doing these things. A um, lot more than I thought there was. I just thought the hard part was drawing, the, drawing it, but um, actually there's a lot you have to do, uh, which is all interesting. It's all kind of cool to see. Um, but, you know, it's worth it because... Uh, we got to just be totally free on what we wanted to do. And, uh, and, um, that, that's a lot of energy comes from just, you can put down whatever you want. Yeah. I mean, we've, uh, we've known this has been going on for a little bit. Yeah. And, uh, we've been, you know, lining you up to come onto the show when it, when it drops, because, uh, if you ever read Batman, Dracula, Red Rain, and the trilogy that involved in that. I mean, this has got me so excited for you to actually just be doing Vlad the Impaler, Dracula, uh, the whole business. Because uh, Red Rain was, um, I just remember reading it, reading it at the time, and and your art was so different from everything that was that was out there. And and there were wonderful, wonderful artists, but you yes, know, this, this, this Kelly Jones art was just. <clears throat> so different uh, from from everywhere else, and uh, seeing Batman in uh, in this weird Elseworld story, uh, fighting against Dracula and everything that came with that, and oh man, well, it was I needed more. I, I never more. knew. The funny part is, uh, you look back on it, and I didn't realize how different it was, or what I was doing was then. You know, I just yeah. was doing it, and I never thought in comparison to just how uh, stuff looked in general from everybody else. Not that it's good or bad. It's just, I didn't, I was just so close to it. Mm -hmm. And a lot of my career, it's like you get very close to it. Then when you get older and you, you have years and you go back, you go, good Lord, like, what was I, what was I doing? But I'm glad, you know, I'm glad that, that um, they've lasted. I mean, that those books have lasted and, you know, with, with, uh, Batman anyway. Um I always went into it like I invented him. That was the only way to get sure. away from all the influences and and everything. Uh because there were so many people I liked that it just starts eating you alive. Mm -hmm. um, and uh so probably that has a lot to do with the fact that it looked, you know, pretty different. And I was given I was given a really different story. That didn't hurt. Yeah, I mean, uh, that was one of the beauties about the Elseworlds stuff. Yeah, is that you could you could just be out of the box. You could well, just be uh, yeah, a little they, bit they different. Encourage that. They really hmm. encourage that. That was a big thing. Was uh, everyone go on their own? Um, everyone do their thing. Uh, I I absolutely loved that environment because it it tends to remove you from any kind of competition or paranoia or anything that freelancers always have you're just yeah you're told hey go and do this thing that's what we hired you for and um and so when they would ask me uh you know what my what what it was i was going for my motivations it was never in a critical way it was like they were just curious mm. you know um so but but again like you said i was surrounded by a lot of great people um at that time uh, I thought, uh, and, and I was off in the woods. Everyone else was in the, in the spotlight. I was off doing, you know, you turn something in and, and that's fine, but they have the monthlies to handle and, mm -hmm. and whatnot. And, and that was also pretty freeing when, when you're not the reason <laughs> the record label has to stay afloat, sure. everyone else is keeping it afloat. Um, yeah, I just figured, and, and you get into the mindset, well, I'm going to do something different for those people who want something different and I'm going to mm -hmm. do something different for people curious about whatever the story was. So I never felt like, Oh, I'm going to do this thing and be a, you know, independent rebel voice. It just, it was, I couldn't really be anything, but so it was just a good, uh, it worked out just well. I mean, your artwork is, 
and we'll see it. Don't worry. I'm going to let more people come in before we go into the Dracula campaign uh, oh. because we're, we're just started. But your artwork just lends itself to yes. horror. It, yeah. it just lends itself to horror. Uh, and uh, having uh, just started collecting comics, I was very much a comic normie because I was just used to the Batman and, and tech at that mm. time. And we were just getting into the nightfall phase and you were doing the covers for uh, Batman. Yeah. And uh, and so as, as, as somebody who is then sort of nervous at first to, 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 to branch out into the Elseworld stuff, um, but just so in love with your covers uh, that, um, you know, this was just like a no-brainer to, to pick this up. Uh, just just kind of open my mind about where you can go creatively with uh, with two very established characters. You know, yeah. Dracula's... Uh, I mean, you say it in the video, but it's true. Dracula's probably one of, if not the best-known um, character in fiction, in, in uh, horror, certainly for horror... I, um, I've always felt Dracula and Sherlock Holmes. They're the most known. And once you touch those, you better be serious. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I mean, I would go. Yeah. I mean, Dracula, Holmes, I would say Frankenstein's yeah. monster. Frankenstein uh, is a, is another huge one. I think those, you know, uh, it, within itself, obviously very different genres with, with Holmes. Well, can I kind of not actually. There's a lot of supernatural in, 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 the, in the Arthur Conan Doyle uh, stuff, which is, which is phenomenal. Um, yeah. But yeah, just to see how how are you going to balance it? That that was one of my initial things. Like how how is this going to work? Because I was thinking about how is he going to make Batman, uh, Batman and and uh, Dracula actually work? To and and it it's just like, what when you're reading it, it's just like duh. This just like absolutely makes it makes sense. And of course, we well, have the Gotham by Gaslight, which was yes, a, yes. a very clever a very clever uh, telling of um, of Batman in uh, Jack the Ripper. You know, yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, B Batman does work really well in a in a horror environment, and it's uh, it's surprising that um, he, uh, certainly that character hasn't been played with more in that field. Well, I think I think what happened was Doug Minch mm -hmm. was a big fan of of horror as well, and he had told me uh, if we're going to do it, let's do it full throatedly, just go in and do it, and not hint at it and not scooby do it but really go in and um and his premise was good he said um you know gotham is a long history of being kind of a corrupt place it makes mm -hmm. all these crazy villains and its punishment would be dracula coming and finishing it off that was mm. his premise and and batman would have to stop that but first batman has to believe it's actually happening yeah you know so um and he wanted to he wanted to take the characters through the journey of like a reader that they're not going to believe this and how do you do it? I mean, he was very clever in in doing that, but um, uh, all of that too was under it, it was underpinned by the fact that he wanted a truly gothic story, not just in look, but in what gothic means. In that, sure. even if the right objectives happen, a lot of bad stuff happens, um, and and. Uh, he he sold me on that uh, with a really nice premise. Mm. Um, but what really made me feel good was the first several pages I turned in. I was wondering if they'd go for this. Yeah. You no. Know? I mean, everyone can say it until they see it. And I, I around 30 or 40 pages penciled in. Um, I, I then began to breathe a little easier that they were not freaking out, mm. you know. Because I, I did, I I couldn't think of any other truly supernatural Batman stories up to that point, even if it was an Elseworld. Um, no, I mean there was, you know, you get the odd uh, Neil Adams, Daniel yeah. Neil, yeah. Neil, Neil Adams stuff, but uh, other than that, yeah, because he's a grounded Batman's a very grounded in reality character, <clears throat> and and I like him that way, even though I do it the way I always did, even in in the regular mainstream. Um, I always saw it, it in the mainstream. I always saw it as a uh, uh, film noir. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and that was that was my take. Was always um, if I can't, if he does not have superpowers, I'm not going to highlight the superhero look of him as much as this true revenging thing in the night. Um, and and that 
because you have to come up with something with a character that's been around 60, 70 years, at, you know, you just can't go in and say, I'm going to do the same thing. Um, mm -hmm. Even if I got the same kind of stories, it would change how they would look in that presentation. Yeah. Um, and I was willing to take heat for, for how I drew him and whatnot. But, you know, in my head, there were so many other people doing great versions of him. Mm -hmm. Uh, I felt okay. If, if someone doesn't like it, that's okay. You know, I'm like that. If somebody doesn't like something, I'm okay. Um, what? Yeah, it's it's a shock. I don't, yeah. I don't mind. I I actually think different opinions is very healthy. It doesn't it doesn't crush your identity no. as a human being, and you crawl no. and, and then I, go complain in Twitter. You know and say what? It's I'll, I'll be honest with you. I actually respected people who would stand in line when I was signing books to tell me how upset they were with the long ears in the case. <laughs> I, I, I was never offended by that because I thought, you know, this character, yes, I'm earning my living doing it and I'm loving it, but this character probably means even more to them than me. You know, they've been, yeah, I understand that. they walk on broken glass to get these issues. And, and, you know, so it isn't so much, I would apologize. I would always take the time to try to explain that this isn't done just with, with, out anything but kind of my view and respect for the character. Mm. But I completely was not going to change their mind. I didn't want to change anyone's mind. I, I don't believe you can by just words. I yeah. you either like it or you don't. Actions and, and yeah. so I but I would never disrespect somebody for disliking it. That's that's cool. And um and I wouldn't I wouldn't take it personal. My identity though is not being a comic book artist or or mm -hmm. that. that that's not who I am. So so hearing that kind of stuff, um, you know, I would hear these things. Uh, I would never tell my wife because, you know, the people around you get very protective. And so I would sure. never tell her anything in those days like that because, frankly, uh, you know, I didn't I don't want her involved in it. And yeah. so it that was a healthy thing because I could go on and we'd go to dinner or go to a movie or just BS about whatever. And you you don't feel upset because of that i could remain independent mm -hmm. you know i wasn't going to be a standard bearer or anything like that and i wasn't going to be some righteous voice in the wind i was like oh no it's just what i like to do and how i spend my day and uh if dc were to call me after a few years say you know we're sick of this now i'd have been fine you know, I everyone gets their moment on stage. How long can you play shortstop for the New York Yankees? You get a few years, <laughs> and then they get the new guy. Completely understand that. That's the rules of the game. What it turned out to be was that being so different gave me a very long and has given me a long career. Because the work now, I'll have people see the stuff I did then and they'll think it could come out now because it is of an independent voice. Um, so, but that was never the intention. That wasn't what I thought. My thought was, um, I'm having a good time. I'm not bored. I don't have a real job. You know, this is a fun job. This is a fun thing. I mean, I couldn't believe the good fortune I had, you know, um, I was so grateful my wife had no curiosity of this world. So hmm. I could get away from it and it didn't, you know, it didn't absorb every waking moment. All of that brought a lot of energy every day to doing it. If it's not there all the time, you're free. If you can handle criticism, you're okay. Mm -hmm. uh, if you don't take it personally, and you mm -hmm. just realize that these people care. Yeah. And I and I admired that. If you want to know the truth, I used to I used to admire it. And um, because I grew up loving comics, I still love comics, I care about comics. Um I want comics to it, it comics don't need Kelly Jones. They need me only to be a fan of it. And that is that's my head. So if it ends tomorrow, it's okay. Um, I'm just, uh, it, but it's given me this great life of just not having to really work. Even when I'm working on a holiday, even when I'm working at two in the morning, even if, I, I mean, I hear all these people complain about it and, and there's, I guess, you know, but I don't expect anything, you know? 
If people like me, they do. If they don't, they don't. My favorite, favorite, favorite comments are usually from people saying, I didn't know what to make of you. Mm. I thought, you, you know, but then they start getting into it and then they become a fan because they begin to get that there was an idea behind it, not a shtick. Yeah. Yeah. That's really important. That sounds really healthy, Kelly. I'm not sure if you belong on the internet. I don't um, think <laughs> I don't think you can survive if you take it personally or feel like you, you can't. It's you, business. You can't. And 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 I'm for me, I'll tell you my biggest concern wasn't trying to be some avant-garde independent blah, whatever that is. Mine mm -hmm. was trying to get the 22 pages and a cover done a month. That was yeah. my main goal was not to disappoint my editor and Danny O'Neill and and not to disappoint the or or hinder the people that were following me uh and make sure the retailers got their 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 books on time um make sure the distributors could ship something i mean that was my main thing so my big fear wasn't how do i redo you know or invent some new angle on something it was like mm -hmm. don't get a cold you know try to uh uh the the try to be that person that no one has to worry about um in terms of of getting it in i do think i do think it's important and, and it it made me become a much better artist because when you're under that you have to produce you have to get it done um you have to get you have to get it in on time so your your mindset is uh getting it done for that day, whatever you can and uh, giving it your all is as you must, because other people are doing it. I, I think it hurts other artists if they don't, if they don't do long runs, I yeah. think it, it teaches you, it, it clears my mind. I can sit down now and draw uh, pretty effortlessly as opposed to what I used to, because I've learned how to think mm. as opposed to, use a i don't even use fancy tools like the number two pencil and a kid's eraser i don't and i don't say that it, I, because i don't need That's awesome. the I, yeah, I don't sure. i don't need it what i what i've learned is to develop how to think and mm -hmm. that came from those specifically uh those three years under denny o'neill doing the monthly book because I, I i mean i i mentioned this last time you're on the show but obviously there'll be lots of new people here uh, but I, I do recall saying to you that um, I was so used to you being this cover artist because yeah. uh, you were so larger than life on the covers, and it, and you sort of again your your artwork lends itself to that that sort of splash display of 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 being front and center bang. But when it was announced that you were going to be taking over the Batman interiors, I was just like, because of the you know, the ridiculous quality of the work, yeah. I was just like, how is he going to how is he going to manage? I, you you uh, understand that that first month when they sent the script and I knew I had a month to do it, I was thinking exactly what you were thinking, that there can't be a drop off. You have to yeah. keep, you have to keep doing this. Look, I was very lucky early on to have people, uh, Neil Gaiman, Doug Mensch, Denny O'Neill, Archie mm. Goodman, they all could oh. see something in me that I couldn't see. I couldn't I, I couldn't see it. And they would get a hold of me and give me these very grand ideas because they felt I could handle it. They didn't say that to me. They just said, here it is. And, mm -hmm. you know, we're seeing it now. It intimidated me like nobody's business, not because of just their reputations. Uh, Doug Minch terrified me because I had grown up reading his comics. Danny O'Neill, I was petrified because, <laughs> because they're coming at you and saying, you know, it's it let we're making stuff now. Now mm -hmm. I'm in the inner sanctum, so I had to I had to be very um, calm and act to nod accordingly, and you know, and then go vomit because it was <laughs> it was all you know. These are these are the people that that made me love this stuff. So uh, I remember Neil handed me the seasons of mist stuff without even. With nothing other than let's just do it, mm -hmm. let's just do it. We'll just figure it out as we go. Uh, Doug, the same thing because Doug had done so many things, and yeah. he was the same way. They they were acting that way. 
it's only until later on did I realize what they were seeing because when you're this close to it, you don't. You're just uh, it's it's you. It's a it's a mixture of paranoia and absolute joy at the same time. I don't know how else to say it. You have yeah. to get something out there. You have to come up with something new. You have to be excited, and you have to number one be a fan still. Uh, if you're not a fan, get out. If you think you're better than anyone else, leave because we're all trying to do this. And I feel I'm, like you're talking to somebody from a different dimension well, right now. You know, <laughs> no, because I I was seeing I was. Can, seeing I, can I just remind everybody that this is an actual comic creator saying this? <laughs> yes, it's not a unicorn. Okay, yeah. <laughs> that's no, shitting ice look, cream right now. He's not a paid it's a actor. Re, it's not a paid actor. It's a real comic creator who's a human being. Well, you've got to remember, though, they were sending me the black and whites of all the guys there, and it was awesome. I, I used to feel great that three or four months ahead of time, I'm getting these black and white make readies, and I'm reading. I still got them in my garage. I, I would just read them. When they would do it, it was it was like I knew I was going to lose some time because I would just sit down and start reading. Them. And they were basically so you know what was going on. Right for the everyone to know what the other guy's doing, so you didn't trip over each other's yeah, continuity yeah. or whatever. Uh, but for me, it was just an art show. Um, I was looking at people who really know their stuff, and I was looking at um, it, seeing it in production was exhilarating. Uh, and I felt like I would tell my friends who were into comics, you got to come over and look at this, like in the goofy way, you know, we're mm -hmm. look at this, look at this, and they would all sit around. And see it in the black and whites. And you'd see all the notes in the margin by Denny and all the um all the really cool stuff like that. Uh so uh at that point, um your respect only grows, your fandom only grows. Uh I I never look at this doing this as as anything other than a gift. Yeah. Well, and, they, they say if you, if you love what you do, you never have to work a day no. in your life. Now, my humbleness extends to that degree. <laughs> On the other hand, I do my own thing. I mean, sure. I, I, I'm willing to let it go if I don't get to be myself. Um, if 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 I can do that, uh, you know, you never make, you can't make everybody happy. But what sure. you can do is let them know that you're coming from a place of respect. Yes. And you'll listen to them. That's all I do is I used to listen to them. And I I spent time uh, in those days before before Internet writing them some of these people back that would be upset and let them know that, you know, um, nothing snarky. I would I would understand like I would look seriously. Like I said, you stand in line for an hour to let me have it. You're I I, I got to respect that. You know, and it would upset other people. I said, no, 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 no. This is what we do because everyone's read a book, myself included, where you go, hey, why did they do this? That's mm -hmm. the fandom thing. Mm -hmm. we're a, we're good and bad and love and hate and all this kind of stuff. But as long as I know that that creator is given it, this is what I used to do. And I always hoped others would do it. When, some, when a book would take a different direction, whether in the stories or the writing or the whatever, I would give it a shot because I knew those guys were trying. And I'd stick with it. I didn't. God, my collections from the 70s are excellent because I never gave up on anybody. I just keep following and following and following. And a lot of times. Good books. My, my mind would mm. be changed, you know. So when I would hear that, um, <clears throat> uh, uh, when I would hear that in, in, in as, as, a, as now doing it, um, I'm very careful about saying professional. I, I just. I have no formal training. I don't, I, I'm embarrassingly ignorant. Um, but I do have this love and emotion for it. And I, it carries over from, you know, when I was a kid and I first was able to get this stuff and, and, um, so, so I, I'm, you know, a fan who got lucky, got a front row seat, got to be in the secret editing rooms. I remember going into Denny O'Neill's office and it was like Valhalla, you know? Um, it was just an office, but Denny was there and he had, you know, all of his stuff and, you know, that was awesome. Can we protect this man at all costs? Yes. All costs. All costs. I want everyone circling the wagons right now. This man stays safe at all costs. Uh, <laughs> Kelly, you are, my God, not just as a... A, I'm not a, alone. There's other as a professional. 
because you have earned that title. But my God, you are. It's, well, I love. You're an amazing I, human being. I love <laughs> comics. I love, uh, you know, I get a hold of artists and I go, man, you're doing great. This is terrific stuff. And I can tell they're surprised when some, you know. If what do you hear, want? Yeah, what, just. What you, <laughs> no, I just hate this. No, it's stuff. It's and normal. there's a lot of great people. Um, the only thing, if they ever ask me anything, I, I just tell them, keep doing what you're doing. I, I always feel that, again, production makes you better. Um, it's just the way it is. And and if you're going to have a career, you need a body of work. And you need to mm -hmm. run on a character. And you need you need to mm -hmm. submit to the to the actual um, seasons of doing comics. It's it, it's just the way it is and nothing changes it and and it shouldn't because it'll focus their your mind um uh i i adore uh when i'm reading something or seeing something and you're transported you know that's the thing i always tell people who aren't fan fans that that's casual i said you don't understand how great that is um it's like a wide awake meditation when you're yeah, in it is Mm. It's the, the, the power of escapism yes Ugh. and there's not much work out there nope. that can do that and nope. and a lot that's a lot of it has to be world building uh character mostly character character in a, a, character in no. good world building and it does transport you somewhere and it, it's absolutely like meditation that is a great description of it yeah. that's what we're trying to protect well uh, yes. every day i Mega. think yeah. Make I, escapism great again i think I think what you have to do is uh, is always, always, always go to the people that it matters the most to to make mm -hmm. it, and 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 they will they will uh, certainly you can have someone overseeing it who doesn't, but that I always saw as a plus because then I'll enchant them, I'll get them into it. Yeah, because if I mean ultimately it needs to matter to them, you right. got to find that connection, and yeah. in some cases like Harv Bennett with you know the famous story with Star Trek Two is he didn't know anything about Star Trek, but he sat down and watched it and got it, yeah, and understood mm. the connection. Uh, you you can do that. You don't have to be a lifelong fan. Even in some cases in the early MCU, people were just mm -hmm. you know buying up comics and then spending months reading them. Yes, that's pretty much all we ask. We don't ask you to be well. You can, I'm, nobody can I be mean, a lifelong fan. I will say that that what you have to I mean, my wife calls me the oldest 14 year old there is, <laughs> you know, and my mom calls me familiar. Peter Pan, the yes. boy who wouldn't grow yes. up. <laughs> and my wife says 12. Yeah. OK. See. Um, but what it is, is it's that spirit uh, with all the responsibilities you gain as an adult, with all your responsibilities. I mean, my my sons are my focus you know yeah. my wife and sons are my focus so so never never is it that i go uh boy it's a bad day or something like that because they're okay you know that's mm, yeah one. okay the the rest of it is then oh the 14 year old takes over and says you know uh, my big questions in the day is what monster movie i'm going to run while i'm working you know what records <laughs> am i going to listen to uh you know, and then I think of my friends who have normal, regular jobs and, and they have to deal with all the stuff that comes with it. And I think, thank God that my big question of the day in my commute down the hall to my office, my studio is, you know, that's my commute. So, it's just what goofy thing, you know, uh, I can have uh, no problems when I'm in that world. And so conversely, reading this stuff, in, of, uh, this is what it's for, is to just get away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Little little relief. Uh, by the way, what you're hearing, folks, is this thing called gratitude. You don't hear yeah. that a lot. I don't I, think Kelly would go very far in today's industry. No. no. <laughs> well, I never, I was never involved. Not with an attitude like that, Kelly. No. Yeah, buddy. I was always, you know, in the, in the the when I joined, they were all in New York. <laughs> So I was out 3,000 miles away. So I didn't really see other than when I'd take a trip or have a, they bring me out there. So I was away from it. You know, I was off on my own. I would hear from my editor. I'd hear from my writer, uh, people you're working with, and that would be it. And the people I did keep in contact with were all my friends reading comics. Sure. That's the, I, to be honest with you, a lot of times they'd tell me what was going on more than the, better than me because they were keeping up with the fan press. And um, so, so 
when uh, the lion's share of my career was on my own anyway, you mm -hmm. know, and I would go to shows when I did go to the shows and the, and DC would send me somewhere. I was just the biggest goofball. I know how I'm, I mean, I just sit there and, you know, uh, and I looked extraordinarily young when I was at that age. They'd all thought I was like 12, like, you know, they got <laughs> so young, but you know, um, mm -hmm. I, I loved that. That was probably the part I loved the best is because I get to go see all these people that I admired and mm. they let you walk right by everyone and you could go sit down. And, um, uh, it's not so much imposter syndrome, but what it is, is I can't believe it syndrome. Mm. Sure. Yeah. No, I, I get that. Believe me, no imposter, mate. Yeah. Uh, so by, by understand, I, un I get how you feel. Um, I, I understand that, you know, when, when you like doing what I do now, you know, yeah. uh, online and having somebody like you, uh, on the show or somebody like Graham Nolan or Chuck Dixon. And, and you just, I, I, you know, you, you try and maintain this level of decorum and professionalism and, and, you know, having well, this interview had, and uh, inside, I'm just like, <laughs> <laughs> like that, well, that I, is exactly what's going on inside of me. I liked when you had Mark day. Millar on because I had not, oh, really he was heard, phenomenal. I had not heard, you know, uh, I knew his work and I really enjoyed it. Mm. And, uh, but I didn't know anything uh, about any of, and it was fascinating. So I was doing the same thing. I'm going, wow, this is, uh, uh, this is fascinating. This is great. Uh, we got to get you two kids together. Um, oh, we really do. Well, just oh. because he sounded like a fan, you know. He is. He and, is. And, yeah, can, and I'm like, you going, can just this... tell by his tweets and everything that Mark Mark puts out. You, this is man who cares, really, yeah. really cares, and. When you you come across somebody like that, like yourself, like Kelly, like uh, sorry, like Graham, like Chuck, when when you know that they care, it's from from a sort of fan perspective, yeah. it's so intoxicating because you have this person with immense talent, and you know that they give a shit. I, I think it simply comes down to you you hire it, it. You know, there's all these people have ideas what it does to 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 for the industry, and my thing was just hire people who can do runs. That's mm -hmm. it. I, I just we'll start with that. We'll start with when you buy whatever the book is you love, you'll know that artist will be on for 12. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's it. That's all. That's they don't reasonable. They, they can write and draw whatever they want. Okay. You can do that. Just be on for 12 and get the energy going and get people to follow the train and see what you get. And I will guarantee you the creative people doing it, stuff starts coming out. Um Good timing. And it's making you uh, <laughs> chickens organic. ready. I just had an idea. Yeah, <laughs> creative it's, uses. Ding. It it just makes you. Uh, it, it's an organic thing, you know, and and then all of a sudden the stuff you all planned will change, and that's what happened to me. We would all be working on stuff, and then you get a phone call saying, you know, what if we did this or what if we do that, and all of a sudden you get uh these wonderful inspirational moments mm. and um at that point you realize there's the value of of being on this um and i can't uh i can't stress that enough that's really the only thing i would think at first start there um whoa <laughs> frankenstein started moving in the background man yeah. <laughs> I, I think we've got a i think we've got a wild lynn in the background yeah, we got a wild <laughs> a wife in the wild in her natural yeah. habitat and she doesn't like fire either no 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 Brr. fire bad, Brr. Fire bad. Brr. Brr. no like i said that's all i would do guys is just really start with that and and let the imagination start to go and i think when you get when when you get into um that kind of routine and that kind of structure uh that's where comics come to life that's where uh, the 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 camaraderie of it, mm -hmm. you know, and and the journey. Um, I would I would also probably uh, a, 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 an addendum to that is I wouldn't have stories take twelve issues to tell or six issues to tell. You just tell it how long it takes. Yeah. Um, 
and and that keeps people on their toes. If you don't know when, if if, if everything's done in six and twelves, you know where the the beats will be. So I always wanted to remove the beats, and and that way let let these things just fall where they may. You can get your best character work done in that in that structure too. Now right? that may be that may be hard uh, for the people putting it together in, in the offices because they want that structure. It's easy. Yep. Um, but I used to, I used to remember, you know, uh, the mm. exasperation of Danny O'Neill when Doug would change course on something or, <laughs> uh, you know, but Doug would always say, yeah, but it's better now. Okay. It's better. And Denny well, yeah, of course it's better. You know, now Denny having done it would, would say, yeah, I've done it too. Mm. You know, we, we changed course on stuff. And that helps a lot. That's what's missing in Hollywood right now is we're, we're missing a lot of people who have done it. Well, right. you don't and want good. You, you don't want to go into it saying um sure thing. You want to go into it saying we don't know. Yeah. We we like it. We think this might be this might work. Mm. Uh but we don't know. And and at that point um find you you have to you have to have See, I always think uh if comics could use anything, it would be like uh the, I, I'm a big admirer. I know he was a nut and I know people, eh, but I loved Robert Evans, the, the movie guy from Paramount who, who ran the st studios. And, the, and in that he would fight like hell for the Godfather or for uh, Chinatown or mm. any of these films that were really odd. Um, uh, he, he was a nut. And and you everything you read about him is like how did this guy even get to this position? But man, he was he could he understood the intangible. He understood the the uh, that out of this ambiguous idea you may have, if his people were passionate, if you that's all he needed. And and I think that uh, uh, that's what you need is someone there who has a lot of power who's intimidating and crazy, but loves the medium True. and wants the medium to survive and wants new things and doesn't say sure thing, just realizes that if one of those things hits, you've got um, great credentials for your company and great credentials with your creative people out there who then all want to go there and do this thing. Mm -hmm. um, mm. uh, because ultimately that energy makes fans line up at a comic book store on comic when the new stuff comes in that i remember that when they're opening the boxes um we were all grabbing at the x-men or the micronauts or whatever was coming in at that time um and that energy uh has to it has to it has to be from the bottom to the top and to the top to the bottom. It has to be this, we're all in this together. We're not trying to hurt your feelings. We're not trying to, no attacking anyone. We're just doing this. Mm. Um, and let's hope for the best. And if it doesn't work, we'll try something else. But, you know, that's it. Uh, and so I approach those things like in that attitude still. It's hard to break that for me. I mean, I can't, um, I can't change just for that regard. I mean, uh, I don't think it's this many. I think we make as many as, you know, it's it's not like we can only do 10 books. Let's make 20 books. If we can sell 20 books, let's do 30 books. And you just keep titles, you know, it, you just expand. There's no limit to this. Um, and so since there's not a limit to it, then open the door and try new things. And uh, who knows? I mean, who knows what will happen? And it's <clears throat> famous William Goldman, the screenwriter, said that. No one knows anything. Well, I, I think that's a brilliant segue into trying new things. Yeah. Uh, let's have a look at uh, the Kickstarter, which you just released today. Yes. He's already just on the verge of £20,000, which is uh, $23,500, uh, with only 288 backers. So that's a lot of people picking up the good stuff. So you better be quick, because uh, I've definitely got my... Uh, Limited to 666 copies, giggity, uh, hardback, black and white hardback. So you're doing uh, Dracula, Volume 1, The Impaler, uh, Matt Wagner and yourself, of course, mm -hmm. Matt Wagner of uh, Grendel fame. Yes. You've got a great little video here. Let's watch this little video. 
Parker just said. It might help if I set the uh, audio from my perspective uh, to the correct thing, which I haven't done. Uh, hey, there you go. Now let's uh, let's try that again. <laughs> but history is memory enshrined. Some might claim entomb, for history belongs to the bold, the victorious, those who are ravenous for power. Kelly, you have to answer this question for me. Yes. You know what I'm going to ask. No? Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm, Neil, I'm Adam, my... Neil Adams cover. Oh, the, with, uh, uh, which one? With, uh, the, the Neil Adams cover where, uh, the hounds are chasing, uh, lady with Batman. I'll, 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 I'll get it out. I'll, yes. I'll pick it out. I'll pick it yeah, out. I think I, I remember, I think I remember the one you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought, is that, is, is that a little bit of homage? Not too sure. Power, no matter the cost. A craving I have manifested for centuries. I am such hunger incarnate. And this, the history that I have won against countless enemies and across a thousand blood-drenched battlefields. For I am the son of the dragon, Dracula. Bram Stoker's classic novel created arguably the most famous character in all of literature. Yet it leaves many aspects of Dracula's history and persona only hinted at, and thus incredibly intriguing and mysterious. This series of books will fill in these tantalizing gaps and provide a more complete and terrifying portrait of one of the most popular literary characters of all time. He had come to me with this great horror idea, stuff I had never thought of, never seen, and I love. Dracula. I love vampire lore. Our collaboration here is the culmination of our longtime friendship and an incredible synthesis of our two lengthy and accomplished careers in comics. The joy of working on it is absolutely on every page, every panel. This isn't yet another retelling of the novel in comics form. We're bringing you the never before told stories behind the story, the sinister tales hidden in the shadows of the original legend. The heart of Dracula, blood that flows in his veins. It's as much in telling a story as the blood he spills. And in this, he spills a lot. I'm not exaggerating when I say that this project is the magnum opus, everything we might have hoped it could be. This is the journey of my brutal life and bloody undeath down through the centuries. The stories never seen to defeat the godless. One must become godless. <laughs> Dracula, book one, The Impaler. Ooh, yeah. I am. <laughs> that is absolutely fantastic. We're marking it, Ron Button. That is a phenomenal. Uh, yeah, they did it. That was well done. I, I remember being quite impressed uh, uh, when I saw that. So um, the link. Is pinned at the top, folks. If you want to link to this uh, Kickstarter, I mean, the artwork there, Kelly, was uh, absolutely gorgeous. Thank uh, you again. What I was saying earlier, it comes from a you know, really it was just Matt, Matt, and myself. You know, we we started doing this, thinking of going through uh, just normal channels, and then as it kept going, we realized that that it it couldn't really do that. We we would mm. have to go our because there was just too much stuff in here that. Uh, I, like Matt said, I don't want anything changed. So, oh, it's just it's beautiful, beautiful. Thank you. Ooh. And it, and it is that thing when you're free, you know, it it does make a difference on your outlook on yes. on, you know, and also, um, it's kind of working without a net. You don't know how well this will do. I have no idea. I just know that, like I was saying earlier, I was enjoying every day working on it. Uh, you can tell <laughs> when you when you see the Arthur, uh, you you can tell it's it's drawn with uh, I you know it's bet. just drawn with passion, passion. It, you know. So yes, passion. Um, I I love that. That's fucking awesome. It's absolutely phenomenal. Uh, I just Thank back you. it. Thank you. Yeah. Sorry, it took long. <laughs> yeah, you were you're an hour an hour. 
Uh, it's phenomenal stuff. So, um, what's that in real money? I did, oh, I did, real money. Sorry. I did hear the narrator. Uh, <laughs> sorry, Matt Wagner say booked. Oh, in real money, it's uh, twenty twenty four and a half thousand dollars already. Right. I hope what? that's good. You've been up. Well, you've been up for two hours. Uh, something around that. Yeah, just cool. about two yeah. hours. So I don't think it's bad. Twenty five yeah. grand for two hours. Okay, All right. yeah, yeah. I wouldn't personally get out of bed for that. Yeah. <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> but Matt uh, Matt has said a uh, series of books. How many books do you actually have planned four. for? It? There'll be four, four. and mm -hmm. they're all uh, they're all self contained stories. So they tell uh, one how how this happened to him, you know how he became what he became. Stoker. Uh, what Stoker did was, a, you know, Dracula's not in the novel that much. He's talked about, and the effect of him is is talked about. Mm -hmm. So, so, uh, you know, there's a sentence or two mention of how he became what he became, what happened yeah. to him. No, no great detail. Just this is what happened, and Matt seized upon that and said, you know, that's a fascinating story because you want to show who he was. Yes. And how he became this thing. And that the thing uh, that he becomes is all due to the person he is. You know, uh, that's still the most frightening thing. Uh, and as he would carry on, there were others. I mean, um, the second book obviously would carry on, but it's not it, it. As he told me, and I thought this was a neat trick, they would survive if you did not read them in order, or if you only read one of them. They, they're self-contained. Right. When you put it all together, it becomes a gigantic epic, and then and then even more powerful. But I thought that was, I like that because it means you have to be honest with people. You can't say, well, you have to buy them all. No, you don't. Just get one. And if you don't like it, you don't. And if you do, then the next one will be interesting. Uh, Doug Mensch had used to do that. He says we're going to do short stories. Mm -hmm. you know, we're not going to be connected. We're, if you like us, you like us. If you don't, you don't. But you'll know that we are telling Batman stories. That they are, they're very, and that's that's what, um, and that's what this is. It's like telling these stories. You can stay harder edge too when you're telling a complete story. True. You, know? you don't save anything. You you lay it all out, uh, and and that kind of uh, approach means uh, to me a much more satisfying uh read i mean uh matt matt's very literary but everything he does is pulp mm -hmm. i mean it's all you're gonna see it you're gonna I, I mean that's how it was when i read the script the script was he told me on the phone what he was gonna do and it knocked me out because i you know i think i know everything about dracula i've read it all seen it all you know, read the actual histories of him and the whole thing. And here he was coming up with this stuff and it wasn't like weird. It was like, no, it all was there. He just expanded upon these things and went into stuff that I was not expecting. And it was fabulous. He does not do the tired old tropes. He doesn't do, oh, I see the connection. It's like, it comes to you. And, yeah. um, and again, it's 90%, 99% this man's personality's character. You, you, you begin to, I, I told him when I finished it, it's like Tony Soprano. You, you kind of root for him and then you realize you shouldn't root for him. You kind of, you can see where he's coming from and then he seems, and then he's a monster. But you know, it's that kind of a thing. Um, a man of great power and a man who, who follows his own heart. Hmm. How's wow. my volume? How's my volume now? Uh better. Okay. <laughs> you saw it only took him 30 minutes to read that. <laughs> Dude. And now, I, now he's gonna I, piss off for 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah. Uh yeah. Sorry, Kelly. Mm. Fuck, fuck the rest of the guys. And sorry, yeah. sorry, sorry, audience and Kelly. <laughs> Screw Mahler and Maz. Uh I got a few more minutes though. Before okay. I just I have to jump out temporarily and then I'll be back for the rest of the show. Okay. Uh, I do love this tip, by the way, this tip. The limited edition Dracula book hardcover, which is the, the black and white cover, is limited to 666 copies. Oh, no. The I wonder why. They just randomly chose that number. As. It, was I, so yeah, it, must, yeah, it must have been just yeah. a fluke. 
Yeah. Don't know. Don't know what significant six 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 is. None. Uh, this looks but, so good. Uh, it, nearly half of them are gone. Th yeah, thank you. So hey, uh, hey, you, you know, got a, you got a write up in uh, the Hollywood Reporter too, right? So I think I, it was you know, Reporter. It's, I don't know how any of this works. Okay, yeah. and I think what they do is they just look at what's coming down the line, and they choose what they're interested in. Um, so uh, you know, at that point, I, look, I'm just as shocked as anyone. You know, it's like, wow, really? Uh, the response, the response. Uh, will surprise me because we never showed this to anyone. It was just mm -hmm. Matt, myself, the letter, uh, Rob Lee and the colorist, Jose Villa Rubia. And we just, you know, it stayed amongst us. And, um, so when occasionally someone would see it, uh, it, it, I think probably what, what got them was it, they saw it in totality. They didn't see a section or a, it was like, bang, there it all is. And um, it was, it kind of took me aback. It actually, as it reminded me of Red Rain, because nobody saw that either. You got Red mm. Rain was done in a vacuum at DC, and everyone rightfully was paying attention to uh, Alan Grant and Simon Bisley's Judge oh. Dredd Batman. What the yeah, yeah, that yeah. Ad? yeah. Oh my God, that ad. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the... I'm sorry, Kelly. No. Um, <laughs> By the way, I like the way that they put the two mugshot pictures of you and Matt. I know. Up there as well, you know? Well, you know, it's funny because they asked, uh, they went, they said, well, we need, we need a little bio. And I hate that. I hate bios. Yeah. So I don't, I just went and had it done for me. Um, cause I, yeah, I can't write one. I don't know. They're embarrassing. Oh, you should have had AI do it. Uh, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I'd have th two extra thumbs then. So, yeah. um, uh, but, but then when they said the picture, it was funny. Cause I, I was like, Oh God, you know, really? Uh, I, I always stand in the back. I'm, I'm the guy in the back and it's hard to, uh, you know, do all that kind of stuff. Uh, the book jacket thing. Um, but you know, hopefully uh, you, you, I try to downplay it, you know, just let them all see the gore and the blood and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's what we're there for. I mean, I'm not going to couch it and all this. I mean, I like the depth of a care. I love that stuff, but essentially, um, you know, that's what, that's what you're looking for. And mm. I wanted it to deliver. And it only matters if you care about these people or even if you're, or if you're immensely interested in them. Um, that's the only way it works. Hmm. There, I, I honestly felt, uh, there, I feel there are shocking moments that Matt wrote. And I don't mean in just an act of violence, but shocking to me. Hmm. And I, I told him that's hard to do to me. You know, um, that's hard to get me to react when I'm reading something. Um, but, but it, he's so good at constructing a story. He's so good at these scenes all connecting that uh, I never felt I was drawing like this hundred page thing. I felt I was drawing uh, seven to 10 page little things that, and then he connected all and it all, it wove perfectly, but mm. that's where you can get, that's where it's, that's why it would surprise me. It's the link is pinned at the top. Eric, thank you. Eric's been pumping the, uh, the link in the description box guys check it out uh please go and support kelly I, I think from what you've heard today if this is the first time you've ever heard from kelly in your lives before i think you've got a very good idea of the uh the content of this man's character uh already and uh i'm not joking when i say protect protect this man at all costs i really am. please do yeah well I've, uh, been, I've been doing this so long but it feels like no time at all i mean I don't, it, it's not a thing where I, I, that's what I meant about, I never felt I had a job. I felt like I, I was getting away with something, <laughs> you know, <I'll, laughs> uh, I always used to tell my, my dad, see, sneaking the comic books in school, it paid off, huh? That was, mm -hmm. the book. that was the book. Those were the things. So, um, but it, but I only could get there if I loved it. I couldn't get there on just, you can't. You have to love this stuff. People know when you're not sincere. Yes. Yes. Tell when you're the not 
<laughs> they know a surprising amount of overlap with everything you said to YouTube as well. Well, yeah. Yeah. I think, but that's fandom, and that's true of anything. Mm -hmm. I think I think you can. Uh, I would go back and read. Uh, if and they're still there, you can read the reviews from the 1820s and 30s and 40s, uh, and the vitriol over Dickens or over uh, Jane Austen, or and you read these things; they're fascinating. Um, uh, Mary Shelley's work. Uh, you can yeah, just yeah, yeah. see how uh, uh, it, it, nothing's changed. You know, um, it's and, just the technology has evolved. That's it. Yeah, it is. And the, but people want to talk about it, and it was mm -hmm. important. These things are important, and anything new is going to take time. I mean, new anything new. Uh, uh, it, and I accept that because I can remember that doing it to me. I mean, um, it doesn't mean you can't do something new, but it means you got to respect the material. I didn't go into Batman saying, I'm going to change the world. I'm just going to do him through my view, but he is going to be Bruce Wayne. He is going to be the world of Batman. Gotham is going to be this frightening. And the only thing I did was hype up stuff and say, Gotham's a character. I used to tell him that all the time. Sure. Gotham is a character. It, every bit mm. as much as everybody else. And it's the only reason they're all this way anyway. Mm. Um, uh, and so it's going to be wherever my imagination goes, but it will be Gotham. You yeah. Know? Um, and so I didn't feel I had to reinvent the wheel. I just felt like, you know, I took a different road while with those wheels, but yeah. nothing, nothing that would be people. People could criticize the long ears and everything. I, I was fine with that, but they weren't going to be able to criticize the authenticity of the character being on in those books. The stories were going to be authentic. Um, they they were going to be all of the mystery and all of the noirishness of it. Uh, and it was just how I saw it. That, it. that would be it. It would just be how I saw it. Um, but I, I didn't feel uh, upset if people didn't like it. You know, you, you, I tend to dwell on that. I had a lot of love for it. I had a lot of acceptance. I, I remember that. Um, I didn't use that to go after the people who didn't. I actually elevated them to have an equal voice mm -hmm. and, and, and know that I was listening and know that I wasn't, you know, being some kind of jerk. There you go. Speaking yeah. of jerks, I got to go. Ah! Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I'll be back, though. I'll be back. Okay. I'll, I'll be, be back. Long. But uh, okay. love you, Kelly. Back the book. Thank I backed you. it, and uh, I'll see you guys in like twenty or thirty minutes. Okay. Oh wow. Something okay. Like see ya. I'll, I'll go as fast as I can. <laughs> he put he put ten in the chat. Did I'll I be put gone for 10? ten minutes? It's no. Yeah. I just I'll be dude, gone for tw twenty thirty minutes. Read the minutes. chat. Read the. Ch I'll try to be faster. Okay. Sorry. I'll be back. Bye. 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 Come now on, he goes open. early. Now yeah. we talk about him behind his back. Yeah, now oh, he's yeah. gone. Yeah. What a wanker. Yeah. This guy <laughs> dragging down the show. Ridiculous. <laughs> Easily gonna fire him. Yeah. Uh Kelly, I'm gonna I'm gonna scooch uh through some supers and I'm just gonna okay. see if I can cherry pick some uh which are gonna be something that you can get your teeth into as well as uh, as some others. Uh can't do that one because it's for Gary. Yeah, are you a Frasier watcher, by the way? Who me? Yeah. Yeah, I are love Frasier. Have you have you watched the the <clears throat> I haven't seen the new ones yet. I've been meaning mm. to when I had time sit down and and watch this. But I love mm. the original series. Oh yeah, it's 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 absolutely amazing. Yeah. Um uh, Ryan with a ten dollar says, Hey Lord, I found a clip on YouTube from the Frasier show that perfectly encapsulates Gary's supreme gaming skills. <laughs> the clip is called Niall Sucks at Video Games. Mm. Hmm. Uh, Legion of memes, you know what to do. Yeah, I can, I can relate to that. I can relate. I can. Uh, I mean, I don't know why because he's so, so absolutely amazing. Uh, Ray fan with a five pound says, as with your weight loss, are you going to? You're going to have to update the opening credits. Nah, we'll keep that. Yeah, we'll keep me looking uh, sexy and and on the front there. You know, in my knickknacks uh, and whatnot. Um. Let's go down here. Ah, Slade Wilson with a five dollars says from from Red Rain. Whose idea was it to have Batman draw a cross on the wall in blood with the sunlight blocking Dracula's path? That was pure genius. Uh, you got to give it to Doug Minch. He, it, the man, knew his stuff and loved Hammer Films, 
he uh, liked the action of uh, of those films. Um, it, he knew uh, vampire stuff inside out and backwards and thought that uh, he was always trying to come up with new ways to deal with, with uh, yeah. you know, new visual ways. And I remember him uh, when I read it, I thought it was it was wonderful because it seems like something Peter Cushing would have done, you know. Yes, yes, it, mm -hmm. yeah, it feels um, straight out of a Hammer. Yeah, like and a, we, like, a, we, like a Hammer movie. We loved those movies, you know. Mm. It, it's it, see now, if I lived in England, I would have to go visit all the places that they, you know, film these things and mm. uh, <clears throat> um, uh, go sit on Peter Cushing's bench over where he lived, uh, they, they dedicated a bench to him. So, because you, you begin to realize that, uh, those things really, how powerful they were. And it was then, even then, uh, um, uh, Doug and I used to talk about these things all the time, you know, how, how really cool they were. I remember being at his house. We watched a bunch of them. Yeah. Uh, cause that, um, that was actually a little bit like the end of, uh, Nightfall. Well, Night's End mm -hmm. was mm -hmm. uh, we know where they trapped Jean Paul in the um, yes he traps him in the and then he pulls the baffle down because Jean Paul's mm -hmm. got the night vision on so yeah. it's another it was you know a way of sort of luring to trap yeah uh, Batman learned to trap so uh, very consistent with the character and the character's intelligence yeah um, on on how to uh, on how to deal with foes of course. And you know, Doug Munch had some uh, something to do about that as well. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> Just the a little, a little too small. Uh, but yes, it, it's um, it is great when when you kind of get those moments. You're just like, oh, well played. Well, it 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 also comes from the fact that it's not so much lifting. It's a, you get together with the guys. Do you remember how good this was? You remember this? And then you all mm. get into fan mode. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. and that's and that's what the influence is. We all, you know, y'all stand on it as somebody's shoulders, and they stood on somebody's shoulders, and so on. Uh, but you want to share that enthusiasm for those things. I mean, any chance to talk about old Hammer films, I'll do it. I yeah, mean, yeah. I still have my Plague of Zombies coffee cup. <laughs> you and you and Graham should do a stream together because uh, you're both well, massive horror about, fans. Yeah, we've talked about a lot. I mean, um, my uh, probably my favorite vampire film is dracula prince of darkness by hammer obviously because he doesn't say anything and it's pure cinema you know whenever mm -hmm. you have but it's just pure cinema yeah so it it affected me and i still think the resurrection scene is the goriest most gruesome resurrection scene ever and if i'm not going to ruin it if people see it they'll they'll go oh my god um it's nauseating but it's wonderful that's what i like nauseating and wonderful <laughs> Uh, Yanka with a two dollar says, uh, Kelly or crew, I'm self teaching animation. Do you have any mm -hmm. tips? Uh, just produce, produce, produce. There is no, uh, I find that that certainly there's ways to do things that might make it easier, but when you discover your own answers, uh, you have a style, mm. you, you create your own style. And um, I'm a big Werner Herzog fan, and all he said is, "Grab any camera, film a film. You mm -hmm. don't, you don't need anything." Uh, Ray Bradbury's famous, famous thing about learning to write: don't go to college to learn to write. And he says, "Read books, yeah, read, yeah, find yeah. your favorite guys, and then realize that when you're finding your favorite guy, you feel all this emotion. So you want to get that on paper, and mm -hmm. uh, you know, so just a lot of emotion." and keep making them just keep doing it it will happen a lot of people don't produce that's the number one a lot of people just don't do it they you know um if you're going to have a career in anything it's got to be that you have a body of work yeah uh magnum north of the 20 dollars says love you kelly jones respect god bless uh best name i can think of with a 20 dollar says hey hello i totally get kelly about being a 14 year old yesterday i went to my local comic shop and got a hard cover of the barry windsor smith's wolverine run mm. my excitement was hard to explain to normies so let me pose this to you then kelly yeah um 
I hope I'm not backing into a little corner here, by the way. But uh, what are you reading? Comic-wise, what are you reading at the moment? Uh, as of now, see, that uh, I've, I've been enjoying um, uh, Jeff Lemire's Fish Flies. It's an, a kind of an indie horror thing. Right. That's so very different. Uh, and then I'm also, re you know, uh, my wife, uh, Lynn, has been organizing all my books. And mm. they were... And so I'm going back and reading stuff. You know, I bought a lot of stuff I didn't read, you know, and now I'm reading them. So I'm going through a lot of the old, uh, specifically right now, a lot of the old Marvel black and whites, uh, Curtis magazines. I, I, I'll put, I'll pull one of those and read one. Yeah. Um, but I've, I've also been, uh, it's funny, uh, mentioned the Barry Windsor Smith. I just uh, had just finished reading Monsters, which I liked quite a bit, um, which is his new uh uh, hardcover um i've it's it's one of those things that uh you know you start buying all these things and you feel like you used to think i had all the time in the world to read them as and now i'm like hustling because there's so many of them and i gotta you know uh the only thing i'm disappointed with today is we're not bagging and boarding um Yes. Uh, well, I mean, I'm trying to focus on just, you know. <laughs> but, I, but that's the thing I like to see. Uh, I, I, I generally will learn by other people holding something up. They're doing. Mm. Um, uh, I've been, uh, what I've been really trying to do is uh, there's an actual ton of, of good horror comics being produced right now. So that I'm trying to dig into a lot of those. Um and it's all, I know it's kind of independent, but I am really digging. I'm looking forward to a lot of things coming up. Um, no, 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 that's no, not wrong with that. Yeah. I feel like a complete normie because of it. Yeah. Um, yeah and, and it is because, because the, the industry has now kind of spread so much. Uh, it, I, it's not harder to, to find there. It, you I can find it easier now than I used to because it's all right out there. Yeah. It's weird. I mean, you, I say that, but I'm not. Apart from your detective comic covers, because Kelly's currently doing covers on detective comics, and you were just saying earlier about telling a story, if you mm -hmm. take all the covers that yes. Kelly's been doing and put yeah. them together, they actually tell a story. Yeah. Um, which is which is wonderful. But I'm I'm not purchasing anything apart from your tech covers from DC Marvel. But but um, as would it make a difference if people were doing what I was saying, where they would sit down and do 12 issue runs, or if they would try to do, you know, try to be more committed to the actual putting it out. I mean, I know they would have different, it, it, it all predicated upon you're interested in what they're doing. Yeah. I, I think, I think it's more of an issue with the, with what's going on with mainstream than, yeah. than that. Yeah, I I mean, uh, you know, I, uh, would I be interested in seeing the, in reading the Chip Zdarsky Batman run at the moment, maybe. Yeah. Uh, but I'm not because of DC's attitude towards its its um you know its audience. I'm buying yeah, your tech I covers because of you. I'm not oh, buying no, it because I... of Batman, and I'm not buying it because of um it being DC. It's because it's by Kelly Jones, and I, I, I adore that. your work. I do so... appreciate it, and I get that. I mean, I do get it. Look, I I keep coming back to it, but I do think that. Um, it's very hard to follow things when people only do two issues here or three. Sure. Issues there. No, it's, I, I totally get to it. Me, that's a stop start. Yeah. Um, consistency back in, I mean, back when I collected like crazy, when I had yes. a pull list, the long as your arm, you know, you had, you had Chuck Dixon pretty much writing every right. Batman book. Right. You know, you had, uh, Kitson doing Azrael uh, as an artist for, for so many issues. Yeah. Barry was great. Barry yeah. Was Barry great. Kitson. Fantastic. Yeah. Graham Nolan, of course, yeah. with detective comics doing a great run uh, in detective comics. Um, Jim Aparo, Norm Bray Fogel doing stupendous runs. Uh, I, I always loved uh, John Bogdanoff Superman stuff. Yeah. I yeah, loved, yeah. 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 There was some, there was, yeah, there was a lot, uh, there was a lot, but these guys were doing, an, I mean, it was intimidating. Dan Jurgens, of course, as well. No, Dan yeah, Jurgens was fabulous. It yeah. is fabulous. Jerry Ordway, fabulous. Yes, yes, um, yes, yes. Ordway and, and so, Jurgens on Superman is just, oh. It is, it is. And, and I, um, uh, what you begin to do is real, uh, rely on these things coming out by these people um because they had the attitude also they were under terrific editorial control i mean mm. um yes there, there was there was a real adherence to to i mean i you couldn't get away with anything uh with denny or archie because they knew the character inside out and backwards you yeah. know so if you saw it it and it was allowed okay 
I just really feel that that um, structure is what you have to have. You, it's it's my Robert Evans thing. You do what you want, but you got to be under that that umbrella of and and that mindset. Um, I do. I I I don't know if people can do that anymore. You know, I don't know if they can do monthly books. I don't know. Uh, uh, I I see people, uh, other peers of mine, saying they don't know if that's possible, and that kind of that's de that's depressing to me. Mm. Uh, you should be able to draw 22 pages in three weeks. You just, you should. Yeah. If you're going to do this. Yeah. Um, people are forgiving. I, I think the insecurity comes in, in your, in yourself when you have too much time, then you get precious mm -hmm. over everything and you begin to lose the atmosphere of a book. Uh, I think, yeah. And I think it does color what the subjects are going to be in the book. Um, I, I don't want... I, I never wanted anyone to know anything about me. I just wanted it to be about the character. My ver my version, my take, uh, and if you're going to do that, that's good. I think I always felt Doug put a lot of his uh, um, points of view in it, but they were all if he were Batman. Yeah, so he'd always say if sure. he were Batman. So it wasn't like if Doug was Batman. It's like sure. he would think like Batman. Bruce yeah, Wayne. yeah, it, yeah. How would how would Batman? Yes. How would Bruce think and, this situation? Like oh, yes. it was wonderful because I know I'd say, God, yeah, Batman do some stuff here. I know Doug wouldn't do, or I know Batman not doing something that Doug would do. And he goes, Well, that's I'm a professional writer. That my job is to get out of my head. <laughs> yeah, you know. Um, and and Doug used to have a great a uh, great mindset that he trusted his imagination. That mm. he had a great idea. He didn't want it to stretch forever. It says two issues is all it takes. I'll come up with something else. That's, you know, that, that's fantastic. Yeah, that's yeah. great. I mean, I, I, um, when I, I, I love the two, the two, uh, part arcs or three part arcs, they were, they tended to be my favorite because they just seem to tell very concise stories, yeah. uh, and yeah. very, and, and very good story, you know. And I, and I, I was spoiled rotten. Well, I those days. I got Alan Grant, I got Doug Mensch, got, yes. uh, you know, Chuck Dixon, you know, I got just, just these phenomenal, um, I think, writers I think just. Yeah, I think that we were spoiled by a wealth of people. Yeah. I, I felt like uh, I got I was lucky enough to know Alan Grant and he was a oh. spectacular person. A very does, sweet, I mean, yeah, very sweet. Uh, regret of my career is we always talked about doing something and didn't. Um, and yeah, that, being in a position I'm in now and being so fortunate to speak to people like yourself, Graham yeah. Chuck, etc. Uh, you know, Mark Millar, yeah. uh, again, it, it, you know, Alan Grant would have been up there. Yes. On on the on the would love to talk to list. A genuinely sweet and not affected person. Mm. He was he loved the whole medium of comics and he loved making comics and he loved reading comics. Mm. But he also took a back seat. He he would you know, he he would let it be the focus not himself and um, like I said, we, we got on very, very well. I had a great time with him. Uh, the first time I ever, uh, I'd started with DC and when it started to take off for me, DC asked if I would go to a show in Dallas, I believe mm -hmm. uh, they were going to have other people go. And they said, we need you to represent Batman for us. Cause you're, this was in the early nineties, but I wasn't on the monthly. I was just, in fact, I didn't think I should go because I'd only been doing, uh, uh, special projects, sure. but they said everyone else couldn't go. And I go there and I didn't know anyone. I mean, I do this, but I really didn't know anyone. So, um, I went and sat down at the, where they told me to sit and out of the blue comes this wonderful, thick Scottish accent with his hand out saying, uh, are you Kelly Jones? And I said, yes, I am. He says, well, I'm Alan Grant. And he could, t he says, I can tell you look like a fish out of water. I'm not even going to try to do his accent. It, <laughs> it, it was, it was this close to, and you needed it subtitled, but should have got was, Mark Millar into, yeah, you yeah, know, it, it was, it was, <laughs> it was heavy. So he says, you look like a fish out of water. And I said, yeah, I, I don't know anyone. I, I, I didn't know any of the peers. I didn't know any, I was just sitting there. So he goes to the guy who's, I don't even know what it was. He goes to the guy who was going to sit next to me and he's not there yet. He just moves all that guy's stuff to his table and he takes the table next to me. And then he says, well, then I'm going to 
you and I are going to have dinner tonight. We're going to hang oh. out and you're, you know, you're, you'll have a friend here. And we hit it off immediately. Um, I have not, he's one of those guys that you could not, he got on a roll and it was as funny a guy as there was. And I just, you know, he could tell, uh, that I love doing it, but it wasn't who I was. He said something like that because I would mm -hmm. talk about everything else. Yeah. And, um, and we just hit it really hit it off. And it was one of the best things I'd ever done because he just, you know, he'd ring my room and say, come on, we're going to go eat. And I went, you, Oh God, he really wants to go have dinner. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, it and, wasn't a platitude. Uh, oh, okay. Oh, yeah, okay. Right. So I, you know, and, uh, but he was absolutely, um, engaging. He had a great charisma to himself and he put it on paper. Uh, he didn't have to be the life of the party, but man, everyone listened to everything he said. Mm. Um, and he had a great, you know, he had a great way of saying very dry, very funny things. I don't know if that's Scottish or not, but it, it seemed so to me. Yeah. 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 Um, and, uh, so yes, I, uh, he would do a thing. Uh, my wife has is comes from, from Scottish descent and uh but born here and i told him that and he hadn't met her yet and he says i'll be the judge of that <laughs> I'll, I'll, tell you. I'll, I'll tell you if she if she is or not and that's just bull or not but he met her and he's and he didn't say anything and i did not tell my wife that sure. he, he just looked at her and, and he looks at me and says she could walk down the streets of edinburgh and everyone thinks she belongs there <laughs> So she goes, what is that? And then I said this thing that, you know, uh, it was great. It's just, he was just great. Oh, uh, R.I.P. Alan Grant, man. Phenomenal. Yep. Yep. I, phenomenal I miss right that there. man all the time. I think about him a lot. Oh, man. Uh, Nerdy Geezer with a two pound says, I always preferred the long ear look on Batman. I, I appreciate I, that. I got to say, when I, when I saw your uh, covers and I saw just... You know, this isn't. I hope this word isn't uh, insulting. The ex like the exaggerated. Yes. Yes. No. Uh, there's no aspect. insult. You. Uh, I, I loved it. I fell in love with it because it, it was it was so different and it what. But more than being different, it was just larger than life. Yeah. Uh, you know, when you did your Bane, for example, it was just like, you know, holy <laughs> shit. You know what I think? Is, well, one, I always drew Batman as if he was uh, in the shadows. I never sure. think of him in the daylight. So he has to make a good silhouette. But I uh, grew up, a good friend of mine was Sam Keith. And so we were both always doing that. You know, mm -hmm. kind of when I did Dead Man, I went bonk, weird on it and made him what he is. And when he was doing the mat or doing. But it works. It fits. It absolutely yeah. works. He, when he was doing Wolverine, the same thing. So we mm -hmm. were, we would work in this, in my kitchen a lot of times and pass pages back and forth and do stuff. <laughs> like, How are you doing this? And, uh, <laughs> you know, and, and so we both came from that idea that this is normal, uh, sure. what we're doing. And I remember, I remember at one point, Sam telling me, he says, do you think, like, like, wow, do you think maybe we're, this isn't the way to do this, you know, because he's doing his thing and I'm doing mine and we're, you know, and, and he said it over pizza. And I said, well, they'll let us know when they've had enough. I mean, mm -hmm. so right now it's okay. And, and uh, so I, I've always, uh, I've always felt like he, we were always surprised it was accepted. I mean, I did, I did hear that it was, I, I tend to stress uh, that people, it shocked them, but then that's okay. You know, I was shocked a lot. You know, I I was like, it's got to be a certain way. And then someone would do something and I go, okay, this is good. I mean, all right, I like this. I, I uh, was a big fan of like Craig Russell. And then when Craig Russell took over Kill Raven and did his thing, I just loved it. It was so different than what I thought it was going to be because I had seen it done by Neil Adams and Alan Weiss yeah. and guys like that. And then when he did it, it was, it had this uh, pre Raphaelite look, but it was even better. And, um, uh, it took me about all of 10 pages and then I got it, you know, <laughs> uh, golden BMX with a $5 says Mr. Jones, if given the chance or in another life, would you want to do ghost rider? How would you evolve that character? I would totally do ghost rider. I could see Absolutely. you doing. Ghost rider. Yeah, I could totally do ghost rider. There's mm -hmm. a lot of things I would have, I would do with it. I I've always loved that character. Um, there's a lot of things I would do with it that uh, 
a lot of a lot of my odd visual tricks i think would would be very well suited to that character um i'm a big fan of that and uh, he'd always have to do team ups with uh, Werewolf by Night. So, um, <laughs> you know, it's the funny part because Marvel kind of came late to the horror game, mm -hmm. and then Don I thought did the best horror comics, superhero comics in the seventies. They were they just Tomb of Dracula was incredible, and Ghost Rider, and Werewolf by Night, and Lilith, Daughter of Dracula, uh, Son of Satan. All those. They just all click. Yeah. They're all good stuff. And, um, you know, uh, whereas DC kept doing the horror titles, House of Secrets, so they really, uh, it was Marvel just took off with it, you know? Mm. Uh, Abigail, who's been a sorcerer for eight months, says, words I have not heard Kelly speak regarding comics. Are you ready for this? Oh, my God. These are words that you have not spoken. I <laughs> This is why you fail at a modern day. I do. Uh, okay. So here we go. Patriarchy. I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> the patriarchy is here. Uh, diversity. The patriarchy has arrived. I haven't heard that. Supremacy. No. What are, you, are you talking about words he's, uh, but, words he's missing? He's missing yeah, these all are words these words from Kelly the oh, 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 oh. I think, <laughs> yeah. Toxic fans, toxic fans. Don't well, forget that. Uh, <laughs> the, bigger, the bigger view is all those words were always, I mean, I read books with character, different kinds of characters written by all. You know, my career started, it was all uh, women calling me women editors. You know, Barbara mm -hmm. Kiesel hired me for DC. I worked under Karen Berger. I worked under Shauna Gore. I worked under Shelley Bond. I... You know, um, they were incredibly good and, and never thought, you know, it wasn't like it had hey. happened. There you go. It, I mean, that was just what I knew. I, I didn't, uh, I worked with people who were always coming up with different kinds of characters and uh, points of view. So I don't, I don't know. I, I tend to think that comes from generally people who hadn't read a lot of comics before yeah recent times because i'm um i think that's always been there it isn't like there's a before and after with that there's there's nothing i mean certainly not with the books even i've been involved in um uh i always treated you know i remember telling them and it became an angle with dead man that i said i really dislike that he takes over people and then leaves them somewhere and then they think they have a mental condition or some <laughs> stroke or oh, i love that could... i think that's great yeah and so i used to say you know that's kind of like a rape or something maybe we should make him do it only in certain times or to people i mean in that and then i said i know because that's part of the angle of the character i said how about every time he does it, it something bad happens to him mm. right that he sees what he did to these people. And they incorporated that in the first book I did where it drove this person mad that mm. they didn't know who was in their husband anymore. They didn't know who was there. And it became really, really upsetting. And they said, Ooh, that's a good angle. I know that's tough to do. Uh, but that was, you know, um, I thought pretty forward thinking of me in those days. Yeah. I just thought if it happened to me and, you know, I'm sitting there doing whatever. And then three hours later, I'm two cities away. You know, it's like, what happened? Uh, you know, that it, it added a creepiness to a horror character. It, it, fit, it fits perfectly well. Yeah. And not, I don't, I'm not trying to get, I'm not going to get into trouble, Kelly. Um, you but, can, uh, you know, it, it, no, I, I, I'm just saying that it, it's, I, it's just, it, I don't it, understand it's all like these things, all that. these buzzwords, which are being I, used now ha, have been here always. I think they're, they're probably more for marketing than for, yeah. Well, wow. you know, um, um, I don't know. Posing I, you, you know, okay. In the eighties, they called it dark and gritty, you know, we're yes. going to be dark and gritty. There, dark there and is gritty. these mm -hmm. things. And and I'm loath to be involved in things that date my work or date what I do. Um, I want things to come from a natural, authentic place. Yeah. And and um, and if you do that, people respond. And you can tell any kind of story you want from that authentic place, but it can't come from a place of hectoring or lecturing or. No. It's got to be. Well, come here. I'm going to tell you this story. It's not, my, it's not me. It's not me. I'm just telling yeah. you what went down. This is what went down. 
I mean, I that we, uh, you'll know this saying. We have a saying, authentic, uh, authenticity is key. It's, it's a saying that's been around for God knows now how long. And then our good friend Robert Meyer Burnett, authenticity is the currency of tomorrow. Well, I, um, yes, yeah, sir. Because I think there's a distinct lack of authenticity I, now. I, I, I don't know. I just, I, that's all distracting to me to telling my stories. Yeah. It's, it's very distracting. Um, I'll hear that. And again, no one's been able to explain to me exactly what that means, what these things mean. But then to me, um, uh, good will out, you know, the good stuff will work. It, it just does. So even if you do all that stuff, if you tell something and then great, okay, so be it. Um, I can remember how uh, really uh, the dark night hit me when I first read it. Mm. I did not know what I was going to get. Yeah. And everyone at the shop was telling me, you got to, you got to give this a shot. And I love Frank Miller. So I said, okay, I'll give it a shot. And it was so radically different that I had to sit there for a second going, why am I liking this so much? I don't understand yeah. what I'm seeing. I don't understand it. Um, and, and that's what you, that's the goal. You know, I, I think, uh, the goal is you tell Frank told something authentic, you know, he had a great idea mm -hmm. and he told it truthfully. That's all. That's all I want. I don't want to ever, as I did when I like my depiction of Batman, yell it. I'm not going to be upset. If you don't, you don't. And, and I'm, but it's, I'm just trying to be authentic here. That's all. Uh, but I don't see it as a badge of honor, you know. No, it, it, it just is what it is. It's called being comfortable in your skin. Yeah, yeah, that's what, yeah. That's, that's, yeah. I mean, like, you know, it's like, hey, I, you know, uh, that's like a husband walking around going, "I didn't beat my wife today. I'm an I awesome husband." Well, Nobody I like does that. I <laughs> so. never ask someone. You know, I don't do purity tests or question or anything. I just go, "Hey, they're good. They're good. I'll work with them." You know, yeah. if, if if I like it, you don't I like dig it. through that. Wait, you don't dig through their past and go through their past tweets. I frankly don't care. People change, and everyone everyone goes through their own. This thing. guy's never gonna make it in comics. Never <laughs> ever gonna make it in comics. But, but it's all those things in your life. Just that give it up, you. Kelly. <laughs> it's all those things that make you be who you are and create the work you create. And and um, so I'm. I don't know. I think I'm always like, uh, you can't have enough comics. I want more comics. I want it to be a thriving industry. I want people. Yeah to to do this and um i don't want i don't want just stuff that i would do or i agree I, I want the whole thing but i want it done by people who have the respect for it too i mean right starting first and foremost just get the stuff out there mm -hmm. just get it done well, get, get get it done and get good stuff done and yeah. i think what what gets laid on as not you kelly but as and me is like we want marvel and dc to die i want Personally, and this is not associated with Kelly. Okay, I want this version of them to die, well, and, well, and I want I, them to come back. I would love them to come back because you you need Marvel and DC to be a driver for the industry. So. Yeah, you I, need I, them to, and and that and that you know that rises that that brings everybody well, and else. You never up. know where you're going to go because I started as yeah. a Marvel guy as a kid, and I ended up at DC, and I never saw that happening. So yes, mm. you do. And companies change over time. I understand the frustration everyone has. I get it because I'm seeing stores go out of business left and right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There, uh, is something, there is we, something wrong. And I think you're seeing a lot of people go independent. I'm doing what I'm doing with Matt simply because I wanted to tell a story. I didn't know yep. to tell it this way. I didn't know. And, um, but by and large, if it was published by DC, I would have been a happy camper. As it as we did it, I wouldn't have had a problem with that. I would have bought it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I yeah. would have bought it. Yeah, I would have um, absolutely bought it. I I still have a lot of friends doing this. That that uh, um, and I still I still know a lot of people doing this. But I think what happens is that there's a real concern, uh, or their concerns are now outside of just what they're doing. And, and when you add insecurity to that, you're going to just get what you're going to get helter skelter. It's so, going to get so much worse. Right. And, and so I, what, what, when you see it done right, you know it, uh, like when I'm working on a story I know is correct, it's because, uh, you, you can feel it. 
you know, I know I've been on some that I go, well, I hope, <laughs> you know, I'm yeah, like yeah. You're trying, uh, you're trying to do whatever, but then there's others. Mm-hmm. And I think that you want people to be more in touch with that. Other creators be more in touch with that. Not, not anything other than that. No other mm-hmm. objective. And that comes from doing the work. That's that it. comes from like that you said, you know, hey, it, it really builds during I, runs. I'm convinced, yeah. I'm convinced, Gary, that if, if it's gonna change, it's by production. Yep. Sure. That's how it changes. I, I, you're not gonna people, if you're stuck in 22 pages a month for 12 issues in 12 months, you don't have time for a lot of other stuff. Get off Twitter. Yeah, i so I'm not good with yeah, I don't. I I I, they had me join, uh, you know, the companies like it. If you, they have some people have an access to you or whatever, but I used to love letters pages. You know, I like yeah, that. I did. I, I did too. I, re- I and, read it every issue. I would read the letters. And page. my yeah. connection, my connection was, you know, fan press, but also my friends at the stores. That was, that was what we would do. Um, and I'm not saying in those good old timey days, I'm just saying that was where everybody could be it could that energy could be shared mm-hmm. uh, I, I bought so many new books that way um uh it i don't know it just was it was exciting going to the old shows was exciting you know uh coming across the guy who had the the back issues that you were looking for was oh. i mean if there's anything that it that i wish people could have is to go through and dig and you find that book i mean the hunt and it's the it, best it's it's yeah. absolutely the best. Well, uh, we it's... we we recently had a comic book uh, creator, and again, I don't want to associate you with this, Kelly. Uh, he came out, and did you miss this as? Uh, so uh, somebody came out. I'll I'll leave him unnamed, and basically blame the comic book collectors and speculators for for the 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 lows of the American comic book industry over the last. This is a working comic artist, by the way. Uh, came out and said it's the it's basically the comic collector's fault. Bruh. That is <laughs> well then I'm a... <laughs> I'm one of the guilty then because yeah. I still yeah. collect them. You know oh, oh, okay. Uh, the people uh, that buy the it's the it's the fault of the people that buy the product. That actually sounds true to form to current day comic book industry. Well I think I it's ultimately you have to blame yourself on any mm-hmm. I, I always have to come to myself and it's go. It's not me. It's you. Yeah. yeah. Oh, like oh. like if, if, video, if videos start not performing, first thing I will do is look in the mirror. Yeah. <laughs> I will put in the comment section, I will put in the comment section, why aren't you watching this video? To the people who have watched the video and commented. I I just, I, like I said, I've, I've just, that's where it comes down to is you it, i mean i blame myself when i'm late or i blame myself if i think i'm going to be late or i blame myself if something's not working uh if if uh and i've done i think some really good books that nobody ever bought you know mm. um at that point i went yeah they were good books though i'm glad i did them it didn't change my you know there's other times i've did stuff that did really well and i went oh i missed well, I missed this thing. And so that that's a lie. The if it sells a lot or doesn't can be a lie. But but all of them are as true as I could make them and blame myself at that point. Um, and also give credit to others. I've been where something works and I'm working with a terrific writer mm. or a great story. Man, I of course I do. It isn't just that you you get a lot of juice from from a script that's humming. Okay, so uh, what this uh, current comic artist said was, comics got an amazing got, comics got amazing boosts during the pandemic from people who came back to the hobby. I don't know about that. I don't know about that take at all. Yeah. Unfortunately, greed made it so. Uh, I think a lot of people went to back issues during that time. Yes, so if that's what he's yes. talking about. Yes. Unfortunately, greed, and we're talking about American superhero comic books specifically, uh, from Marvel and DC. Unfortunately, greed made it so a lot of those people became speculator collectors instead of readers and sellers. Ab- instead of readers and sellers obliged, when they realized they weren't going to get rich, they ditched. Bad biz. You know what's bad biz? Calling out comic book collectors. variants on, a, on an issue? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, but, yeah. I'll yeah. be honest with you. That's always been the case. I knew in the 70s store owners that would speculate on certain books all yes. the time. I, I saw I saw John Burns X-Men and Michael Golden's Micronauts 
they had cases of those come in and they were able to move them. Uh, when they missed, they'd have cases of that, whatever the book was they missed on. So that's always that's been always, the case. Yeah, always, yeah. always been the case. Yeah. I, I knew um, uh, there's a retailer I knew. He's pretty old now. He doesn't do it anymore. But he really he speculated on Iron Man number one back in like 69, 68, 69. But he bought a ton of them. It, it, you know, now they're valuable. He said he was finally it. But, you know, he sold some of them. But mm -hmm. it was so that attitude goes really, really far back. I don't I can't blame people loving comics for being angry with comics i can't blame them uh, for any of that it's it's uh um but it, it, it doesn't make sense though because well, let's just say I, you have people who are speculating on the current stuff and then when that current stuff is not selling right. that is not the speculator's fault no that is that is a, a, a fault of the comic and what's coming out of that so i think that take is just absolutely well, horrendous. capitalism is fine greed is not Okay, I get that. I get, mm -hmm. I get that thing. Um, uh, but but then I don't see the people that are making the books complain when their book is speculated on and they all buy it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what like so, uh, Superman, boy, Clark, Jonathan Kent nine or whatever it was. Well, it, it's you. You come in. You've got to wow people with an idea. And with an execution, you have to wow them. If you can't wow them, you have to make them say, okay, I'm going to, I'll, I'll sit here and see. I'll see if I like this. You have to give people their time. <clears throat> and and that's the end of your influence is your work, your idea, and then you just let happen happen. Mm -hmm. um, anything more than that is you're going to lose the trust of people. If, they, if you're trying to be honest in in your story they'll go with you on it even if even if the the book will die they'll they'll you you will have a career but you can't you can't uh you can't come from a place that you say i do no wrong i mean i'm always questioning everything i do i go okay it's this the next day i always go back and see what i did the prior day and i will make changes or i will you know before i get started on the next I, I, there's always this self-check it's like i said i'm so close to it sometimes sure but I don't, I've never sit there and go, ah, oh, everyone's going to love it. You know, um, it, it's, it's, uh, I'm trying to go, I always start, like for me, I always try to start with a group of people that I think will like it. And then I go, hopefully around those edges, those people that are told might give it a shot. And I mean, mm -hmm. I'm very, uh, very uh, realistic in that. I don't know. I, I, I don't, I don't assume anything, you know, I don't, I don't. And I, and number one, I'm a fanboy, So I just, I, I come from that place of, of, uh, of just sheer love for this thing. And right. if it's not going right, you gotta, I'm just horrified at how many stores are going under and, and oh. long time ones too. Ones that have been around a long time. Uh, Joe field, even floating out there that I might not be around. Yeah. The guy's been doing it for a long time. But I mean, he kind of stepped back and he has a staff kind of running his shop yeah. for him to even float out there that, oh, I won't be around for the next, you know, seminal anniversary is bad. I mean, we lost Meltdown, you know, Meltdown freaking yeah. comics is gone. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That was a huge, that was a huge store in L.A. Uh, all the stars went there. But I would like I would make a pilgrimage to go to that store if I was in the L.A. area and that store being gone is is terrible. Right. Uh, and and other shops have just completely gotten out of of selling new books to survive. I mean, to well, survive, you know, I, are... I, I'm always wishful someone will buy my book. I, I will say or or, yeah. or or go back and look at something and go, hey, that wasn't bad. That was pretty good. I mean, mm -hmm. you do that um, and you should be genuinely. I mean, it's a heartfelt thing when someone tells you they like what you've done. Uh, it's, it's a, I, that, that emotion there is what I center on is it's yeah. what I focus on. Um, the rest of it just becomes noise to me. And, and I know, uh, I know that, that, uh, I'm not alone. I know other creators really, really care about what they do and they invest themselves in it, but you gotta, you gotta see what you're doing and think about what you're doing and know the history of the characters you're dealing with know that um um 
comic book fans are exactly like the hardcore baseball card collectors. Stats matter. History yeah. matters. Yeah. yeah. What happened in 1931 matters because the same rules were applied to now. And when they change it, you you lose them. Um, it doesn't mean there's changes you should make, but not to the very essential structure of it. So uh, certainly bring more people in, uh, have more stories tell, do all those things. Just stay true to the... Be to the exactly, yeah. exactly. Just be, be true be, to the character. Yes, and they're, they're pole stars you steer by, and that's that's easy enough to do. Doesn't say what country you may want to go to. Doesn't say what islands you're going to find, but the pole star's there. So yeah. it's it's what, what we navigate by. And um, that was something Archie Goodwin told me. He says, it's a pole star. You just, that's what you do. I mean, I didn't invent that. He told me that. Mm -hmm. And it came from me saying, are you sure? I'm maybe I'm, I'm questioning what I was doing. And he said, no, because it, it feels right to me and it's interesting. And I find myself wanting to see where it goes. And then he said that he says, there's this pole star and we all steer by it. And, um, and that gave me a lot of confidence. I think that's, it's as simple as that. You guys, it's just really as simple as that. Oh, protect all the other stuff, at all costs, please. Dude. All the other stuff is noise. It just it really is because every five years, everything changes anyway. Mm -hmm. So, you know. It's, that's that's it. There's nothing wrong with changing things up. No. There's nothing no. wrong with bringing in a fresh perspective, Me new eyes, etc. But you you have to you have to stay true. Yes. That's the that's the only thing. You and that's can what people around. can sniff out. That's what yes. the fan can sniff out easily. I do. I so do. when yeah. radical yeah. changes, not going to get into trouble, Kelly. Not going to say anything specific. When radical changes are made to to character, which has been established for decades, and they and and what what are they expecting from the people who have been following those characters for that long? How how can you expect them to go? Oh yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Well, I think I think you, you what you do is you're you're throwing people into the deep end of the pool without any kind of uh, pre preparation for it, and if they're not ready for it, they get up. The, the, yeah, the, you're going to get. I know in my own career the blowback I would get just for changes on a cape. Sure. Okay. So so it's not like you you're going to be surprised by this. Um, I. I do see a lot of people going more independent, a lot of creators going more independent. Yeah. Um, and I, I can't say I know the reasons why, but, but I think it's so they can just tell the stories they want to tell and, and uh, be free of a lot of it, a lot of anything other than just writing and drawing great comic books. Mm. You know, the medium, the medium is, for such an anachronistic thing, it is still very vibrant. It's still, uh, it's like, because when I'm doing this, I'm by myself. When you're reading it, you're by yourself generally. And yep. so there's a communication going on. That is um, really cool. Mm. It's it's a very private, very emotional yes. thing. Um, and anachronistic, right? It's not, it's not some kind of huge thing. So when you're excited, you want to tell everyone and whatever that's, that's so that's the goal. I'm always thinking one person at a time and, mm. uh, and not trying to alienate them, but trying to say, okay, this might be different, but give it a shot. You yeah. Know? Yeah, yeah. Give it a shot. You go into it with that, no matter what you want to do, but you have to be ready for whatever happens. And, and comic book fans, um, they'll walk away. Yes, you know, they'll leave, and I've yeah. seen that happen. Oh, uh, the, yeah. the yeah, lesson I learned at the room. store, Kelly, uh, which you know, I I never owned a retail spot. I've worked mm -hmm. in a lot of them, but the lesson I learned at the store is the customer that walks away quietly doesn't say a damn word, yeah. which is frustrating and sad because you're like, damn, was it me? Was yeah. it uh, was it the story? I, I'd love to know why, but uh, you know, they don't have to give us. They don't have no, to give us I that knew, answer at all I, ever. I yeah. agree. And I knew when, when I would say something about to, to Denny O'Neill, he would say, cause I would say, well, there are some people upset over this or that angle. And he says, well, the it, almost conversely, he says, you know, the people really happy about it 
they're happy. He says, I can see the numbers, so you're fine. He said, they don't feel they need to. They're just going to be there and pick it up next month or put it on their saver, and and they're they're okay. Um, I, I was so excited for Kelly Jones' projects when I when I discovered you. Um, it, it, it literally got to the point where you saw your name attached to something. You're like, I gotta get it. I gotta get it because it, it's Kelly Jones, and Kelly Jones is just this. this. And and that's that's a fan. That I mean, that is a legit comic book fan. That is somebody who um who who comes into an industry potentially because of the character Batman, Superman, X Men, whatever it is, and then they discover the artist. Then they discover the body of work that the artist has done. And then they decide to have more of that artist wherever they go. And I, and that's that's um, an individual like yourself or a Graham Nolan or a Chuck Dixon or a Mama, whoever, uh, Jim Aparo, Norm Bray Fogel, you know, Alan Grant. It's, it's, it's an individual connecting with the fan, whether it be through great writing, whether it be through amazing artwork, uh, even inking, you know, inking in itself is is such a, uh, you know, so in, intricate in itself. One inker can make, two inkers can make the same picture completely different. Yes, yeah. Um, and, and so that to me is, is something special because it's now transcended why you why you actually initially saw them because of the character or or, or whatever or the story which got you hooked. It's transcended that. And and to me, that is what is so lacking today. Is is um, once upon a time we would have people like you, great people like you, and, and Graham, etc., who were on the the big books, doing doing the, the big characters. And and now, and there was no social media then. Yeah. There was no way for 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 sort of like connections to be made. Really, you know, conventions, yeah, but they're very niche, very specific. And here we are in an age of social media where you, where you do have as 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 much connection to to anybody around the world as 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 you can potentially have, and it's driving people away, not bringing them together. Now yeah. I know you can say that social media outs people, uh, outs what they're really like, but I think you know we've we've said these words authenticity. Well, ultimately, they're not enough. That that won't affect you, I don't think, as much. I think what happens is bigger picture to me of is homogenization, and mm -hmm. everything is starting to look the same. It is hard for me to tell the difference of things. Um, I think I think that when the times I came up and doing it, I knew the individual artists without seeing their signatures. Yes, I yes. knew their styles. Uh, yeah. I could read I could read a page or two of someone, and I knew if it was Len Wein or Marv Wolfman. I knew if it, you know, I knew the writer, Steve Gerber, whoever, um, because they, they had such strong, clear voices. Yes. And I think that that's hard to find right now. So I always go to the fact that this homogenization is making it all one color and mm. all one think one way to think or see or whatever. And rather it's than, by the way. Rather than be challenged. Right. And and the challenge of a story at the same time, you want your good guys doing good stuff and your bad guys doing bad stuff. And you want all those kind of that's why we're here. It's the trouble. I want Bond to say shaken, not stirred. And my yeah. name is Bond, James Bond there. You have to go through the ritual. That's that's the pleasure of it. And then see how it how it's spun into the stories. Um, you want tension and atmosphere. You want those things to to be the first thing. In, in a story, um, the arc of a character uh, and action. I want a lot of action. I want a lot of stuff going on. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I want my character to identify who his character is, what he is all about by his actions, not by a long monologue. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think, I think, uh, I feel, I feel bad for uh, some artists who, who, and I know, you know, if it works, it works, but they don't have any original art when they're done because they're doing them on pads and stuff. And so it, it's, it, and that will affect you. It doesn't make the books go quicker, you know, oddly enough. Um, none of this does. But I think all the sad part for a, a lot of artists I know used to make a, a secondary income by selling their original work. And now it's getting harder to find. I think it's with, I, I saw a thing about people, 
uh, writing novels. And since they don't do it on a yellow sketch pad or a yellow uh, writing uh, legal pad, they don't, you know, they do it on a computer. And so mm -hmm. there's no first drafts, there's no notes, there's nothing you can see how that novel got constructed. Yes. And yeah, yeah. They, uh, they feel that it's harming uh, the quality of a lot of novels because you have to go through this laborious thing to be able to. Um, to to see how your mind works yeah to, the method so, yeah. yeah it is and that's just not for other people to watch and go ooh, that's how you did it the process but for yourself mm. um i can be honest with you a lot of stuff that worked for me were mistakes you know um the weird batman came from just being really loose with the sketch i went to go get a cup of coffee it came back and i could see this figure mm. that was not my intent but there it was um uh it's it's that kind of thing where you don't you the creator don't even know where it's going to go and i think that's what that's why i keep hammering you have to do a lot of work you don't know what's going to happen you have to do it in the most archaic form way you can as well because it it's not just a click and it goes away i can start again i have to erase it i have to physically be touching this um that's an artist I, I mean, that's what it is, the pursuit of being an artist. Um, it's, it's not the technology. It's not how many years in a, in a taking courses. It's not anything. It's, I love reading this stuff. I want to be in it all day long. I want to try to make some myself. And it's, it's these very visceral or emotional, primitive emotions that make it happen. And you can't get away from that. You just cannot get away from that. It's not a right or a wrong. I'm not saying a yeah. right. I'm just saying that to focus your mind, that's what you have to do. So you have to trash all this stuff about ideologies and thoughts. And it just you got to get down to what are we doing here? You have to get your hands dirty with it and make something sincere. And then that way, any message you want or anything you want to say, let it be here. Because yeah. it's sincere and it yeah. kind of doesn't come from the distraction. It will, uh, make, you know, you, me, it will make me part with my money. Mm. Yep. Now you, well, you talked about doing your art to like an album or a monster movie and not to CNN on in the background or MSNBC or Fox news or any news. <laughs> uh, well, but you know, I know a lot of artists who do I that. Don't think, I don't so. think anyone cares about what I think on those things. They think what I care about, how I'm going to do uh, yep. Mr. Gordon. Um, yes. Yes. That, they're going to care about that. Um, I used to, I used to not understand um, anything other than that because I felt we were already getting to say what we wanted. Neil Adams and Denny O'Neill certainly did. And I yeah. thought one of them, they did. Um, so I don't have a problem with it, uh, something that has uh, that kind of a thrust to it. Um, that's, that's more than okay. I just don't want to, to to that be the only thing you know yeah and that be the you know the character the character yeah. has to come first i want i want my yeah. characters to be wrong too yeah you know i want them to be wrong and that and that arc of trying to be a hero isn't just with the power you're Im imbued with but your your who you are as a person and and there can be failure in that um you, you in fact it's it's through failure that the the great stories they always have that in what mm -hmm. what how did spider-man start with a failure yeah. absolute failure that led that uh he believes led to his uncle's hey, death uh, uh, Macbeth listened to his wife so yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, uh break we got some sorry we got some breaking news okay. about the marvels about the marvels you guys ready oh uh okay yeah the review embargo lifts uh at 9 p.m the day before it releases <laughs> that's not good day before <laughs> the day before it releases the night literally the night before it Have releases you wondered if they had done jim starlin's captain marvel oh jim Star I, I, kelly when you were talking oh, about oh, uh sorry, how, sorry, how you can be sorry, like very sorry. uh whoa, whoa, whoa. it ends at midnight eastern <laughs> at the night the day before it releases so no, just, that's confidence that's confidence sorry 
I had to clarify. But, no, no, no. When you, were, when you were talking about, you know, how a writer can be, like, sparse with their words, but it says so much. And what they, I was thinking Jim Starlin, because Jim Starlin could could just set so many things up with not saying or doing he was too a much. Master, he was a master of the beat. He yeah, yeah, the beat. yeah, yeah. So he would do a thing, do a thing, and then there'd be that look on Marvell's face. And then that look on Thanos's face. Every, there's no words that could make it better than his imagery when he led you down the path to that, whether it be a mm. conversation or whatever. Um, Starlin was one of those guys that hit a thing in my brain that no matter when I saw his book, I had to buy it again. There would be Captain Marvel number 29. And I go, okay, I bought it. I have it. I'm reading it. Oh, there's another one. I'll buy that one. Three weeks later, I, oh, there it is. I'll buy it. I mean, you reflectively buy his work. Um, and it was because of those kind of things. It was just so good. And I'm like going, that's what you always want is people just to so dig what you do. And you got to remember, uh, Starlin was a huge influence, but he had a hard time getting those things to sell because they didn't know how to sell them. You know, um, I mean, the regular way of selling a book didn't work for him because they were these huge epics, mm. uh, telling, these what they called cosmic epics. And I think the closest you got was maybe in the old Fantastic Four, but his were truly cosmic. And they weren't just, he went into space, but they were inwardly too. Um, but, and there's no greater tragedy than the story of Marvell. That's- Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and then you can do whatever you want with whoever gets the bracelets after it, but tell that story and- and you tell it the way he did. Uh, man, the death of Captain Marvel is still my favorite crap. That killed me when I read that. Um, yeah, Gary, Gary made me read it, and yeah. we discussed it on uh, one of the shows. Oh, uh, God. Yeah. God. That was so good. I remember um, he when he was drawing it, he had been worried because he wanted to try using felt markers rather than his typical style. And I really liked the effect it was getting, but he worried about it um, on, on, and just, and just that level of drawing that if, if it was going to bring all that emotion that he wanted, I thought he did a brilliant job. I remember telling him that, that I thought, boy, the using these marker pens, he thought it would help him speed up. He didn't have to dip and do all this stuff, but it was a great trick. It worked great. Mm. Uh, Angry, happy, fun ball 75 with a five dollar says, as an artist who is in a down period, hearing Kelly has been inspirational. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate that. Uh, it is that. I mean, I, I look <laughs> listening to you today, Kelly, it's just like it, it really is such a breath of fresh air. It, it truly is because it shouldn't be, though. It, it really I know, I know it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be, but it is. I mean, um, you know, uh, you are a legend, comic book legend. There's no denying that. So to discuss every, you know, your body of work, where you've come from, you know, Dead Man, going through to Batman, et cetera, going off now, Dracula, blah, 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 Red Rain, all of it. You know, that, that those should be really the, the kind of conversations that, that we're having. But just hearing the way that you you see things, the way that you interpret things, uh, and, and the way that you do it in such a, a, a calm manner and just literally just dissect you know through it, it it's it's so refreshing to hear and it and it's just wonderful it really is just truly wonderful man well i i do appreciate that you gotta i mean i think legend means i've been around a long time <laughs> uh, yeah. legend, legend but, means that um means on, that, on that tragic day that uh, we're no longer here <laughs> you will be remembered for a well, long I, long time i appreciate that i look I was always, my father had taught me to shut up and listen. You just, just listen. Don't wait for your turn to speak is what mm -hmm. he used to say. And at that point, uh, and that just stayed ingrained with me. So when I got to a point where I was getting regular work and important regular work, I still did that. I still kept my mouth shut and listened to these guys that was around. So I remember um, sitting and signing a bunch of Batman books with Jim Aparo and oh. Dick Giordano. Mm -hmm. And I just was listening to them talk. And everything we're saying here, they were saying. 
and I I thought, boy, nothing's changed. You know, that's a good not something's not changed. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's I do, because I do want change myself. I wouldn't have a career if it had to stay locked in. So I'm not against the change. It's just these guys, I would listen to them talk, uh, especially because Dick had hired Jim to work at Charlton. And they were talking about comics then up to what they were doing. And um, and I I didn't feel I needed to interject mm -hmm. and pontificate or anything. I just listened. The only thing I would do is just ask them, uh, you know, fan questions. The same thing happened when I would sit around the editors and they were talking about, I remember him saying uh, at, at some retreat and Denny was over overseeing it. And, and I just didn't feel I had anything to add to what they were saying. I didn't feel I had to say, we need to push this in or we need to do, I, because they were letting us do it anyway. Hmm. Um, but it, it was a thing where you just, you, there's so much if you just listen um, that you get. And it does color your work. But right now, everyone's just... The problem with social media is it's silent. So it's just... And you read, you you inflect maybe your worst onto what somebody says rather than maybe their best. Or maybe yeah. someone's skeptical or maybe they're just yeah. asking a question. Yeah. Um, I always... I, uh, I What I knew were people, I would hear them ask these questions. All the same questions. All the same stuff. None of, the, none of that's changed. It's not like... They invented a technology that's going to make some new awareness happen. It's always been there. So um, that part, though, of the listening is gone in, you know, they, they just you don't take in the idea of somebody and, and kind of let it rattle around in your head and see what it th what you think. And it's OK if you don't agree with it. It's OK if you do. It's that's all OK. But the vitriol is useless. It doesn't mm. make anything good. And. If 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 there's a big reason why people walk away, it's vitriol. Mm. Well, why be a part of something where they'll you know it's no fun? Um, I come here for fun. I do this for fun. Um, the fun is talking about it. Um, I st I enjoy when you guys are bagging your books because then I'm comparing it to my own collection. What do I have <laughs> or what I don't? Uh, Gary was doing the treasury editions and it made me go dig out all my treasury editions because I love those big oversights. Yes. I just got one in Palm okay. Springs. Yes. I love these damn things. I did too. I did too. Uh, BLB. Two seconds. Hey, yes. Yeah, so Battlestar Galactica. It's a little yeah, beat up. Don't care. Look at how beautiful this is. It is gorgeous. These are just beautiful things and like these were expensive when we were kids. So I'm like, yes. man, it's, it's a whole dollar fifty. It was a dollar fifty. And a lot of times they didn't have the shelf space for it. I used to get them at a 7 Eleven because they had the shelf space for it. Yeah. That's where I got like. And they were right behind the Playboys. They were right there. <laughs> so, hey, but, and then we actually just still bought the comic books. Um, but I remember that I had to go to get the treasury editions, I had to go to 7 Elevens or convenience stores. To get these, to get these great oversized books, um, Jack, uh, the the one, the first one I got was um, Stanley and Jack Kirby's Thor, where Thor fights Hercules, and that just that story to this day, if they ever did that as a movie, would be I a know, smash. but they would make out today. They would just well. <laughs> they, yeah, they, they would they would Greek wrestle. <laughs> Man, when 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 Jane Foster's playing one against the other. That is just great writing. Yep. You know? now, now Jane Foster would just beat them both up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, these these may not be American, uh, but because in the UK we would have magazine size. You call them yeah. size. But uh, I just recently picked up a run of Eagle. Hell yeah! Oh, dude. Yeah, that's good. Which is uh, phenomenal stuff. That's, is that 2000 AD stuff or like? Oh, uh, Eagle was Dan Dare. Dan Dare, uh, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, you know, stuff like that. Because what was that? Hang on, what was? Uh, hold up the first one again. The, that's the Mekon. That's the Mekon on the front. 
No, no, go up a little bit. What's that? Hang on. It says free space spinner. Yeah, they oh, had yeah, something you, you, like you, that on yeah, 2000 yeah, yeah. AD on the first one of uh, on the first 2000 AD with uh, you get. Uh, <laughs> this is great. Free gift. Wear it with pride. That would have a completely different meaning today. Oh. Uh, but yeah, you'd, you'd get your uh, you'd get your free gift sometimes, or you get pull out posters. There, there's, there's there was I think they still make them. There's like Doctor Who magazines that come with like little toys it's so weird mm. how you guys do it you put it wrap it in a plastic bag and you put a plastic thing with some cheap ass toy i still get i Next. still get my favorite magazines come from britain i love 40 yeah. times you know i look forward to my 40 and times i look forward to my uh, it's down there yeah that's great that's awesome yeah that's great i still get my uh i'm a part of the richard the third society so i get my big Richard was done in magazines and he was everyone, you know, I, I got my little card. So whenever I go to England, I'm going to go to the Richard, the third sites. And <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Yeah. No, I, I was just there and I love the magazines. They're cool. Cause they still buy I them. Do. I they, do. they still buy them. So like uh metal hurlant was like this thick I love when it. I bought it. Uh, and I, you know, I couldn't read a word of it. No, but I'm they like... still, they still put, they're all into great magazine making and design there. Yep. I love physical media, so I, I just yeah. so much more love holding the magazine. Hell yeah. I've been going title. nuts. I've been going nuts on physical media lately. Yeah. So this huge uh, this uh this uh Evil Dead box set came out, didn't even know it was out. It might oh. be old, but it's got Ash versus Evil Dead, it's got everything. It's got yeah, everything. Yeah, that I gotta it. get that. You gotta get it. Yeah, Ash I versus love Evil Dead Ash was a great versus show. Evil Dead. I love that show. God, that was such a good show. By the way, Kelly, you're great. uh you're knocking on the door. And it's going to be answered very soon, but you're knocking on the door forty thousand dollars, right? Wow! Already, okay. okay. Unbelievable start. That is a phenomenal start. I think that is. I'm. I. That stuns me. Uh, Steve Normandy with the five pounds says, "I really love the Dracula story, but listening to Kelly talk, I just had to go get the limited edition hardcover." I appreciate that. Actually, I do. I'm let me check to see how many of those are going because they were nearly they were half gone uh last time last yeah. time i uh look let me just re i'm gonna have to refresh for those to uh update uh let's have a look see um there's only 264 left of the what which of one of the 666 the uh, wow. the, the limited edition hardcover where there's 666 limited to 666 surprise i don't know why 665 taken 667 taken <laughs> So they went with 666, but there's, uh, yeah, only uh, 264 left. Okay. Okay. That. Well, that's good. That is very good, that's I would good. say. I would say. Um, now then, uh, Mr. Hat with the $10 says, uh, Hey, Az, I love your content. I'm a writer, and I'm going to release a graphic novel soon. I'm 24, and I'm new to this. What are writing mistakes? That you see from first-time indie creators, I, I, I mean, I, I would, I would say that there's, there's going to be a lot of mistakes. There's going to be tons of mistakes, <laughs> you know, because yeah. you're new and you're fresh. I'm still, and... I'm still making them, so it's okay. I yeah. overdraw, I way overdraw, and I force my letterer to try to figure out where to balloon everything. Because, and I know I should leave in space. I yeah. still make that mistake. I think the only thing I tell them is, whatever you've written, cut it in half. Your dialogue, I... cut it in half. Dude, that applies to, I mean, that, that yeah. we can apply it to videos. You can apply yeah, it yeah. to so many things, <laughs> yeah. uh, so many things. And that that's probably my very first criticism yeah, of any indie book, especially a writer who's never picked it up before. If you're doing, yeah, and if you're working with an artist, don't say what he's drawn. Take advantage of the fact that the reader gets it. Get to see okay. it. Yeah, yeah. Oh God, that happens in Hollywood all the time. Yeah. With I don't know, in Ahsoka where they're going through a minefield and then somebody goes, it's a minefield. Yeah. <laughs> Oh really? This is no, the clone uh, war. <laughs> we're in a clone war. Uh, exactly. No, uh, it, it's. I'd say dial down the dialogue and uh, make every word has to count. Like mm. every single word. I mean, sometimes you have to do some ancillary stuff, but like, there's a way to make that count. Yeah. Right. As a reader, I'm just saying that purely as a reader, not as somebody who writes or even knows how to spell, because I don't. But um, as somebody who's you know, especially because I have to reread uh I, I don't talk i have reading comprehension problem always have my entire life so i have to read everything twice that's why i watch everything twice read everything twice 
because I have comprehension problems. It's not whatever. It is what it is. Uh, but um, in doing that, I you know, especially that that second or third read in, uh, I'll either understand, I'll understand more, but I'll be connected more. And and when I'm in that second or third read in on stuff that's just overly verbose i'm like looking for other things to do i'm like oh no no because so i don't have that connection there are readers i mean there are writers of course alan moore just fills pages and stuff well you but have it's to, interesting yeah don't know? write the stuff people will skip is yeah the thing. you don't you don't want to write what people are going to skip so you got to know everyone does that if you're going to write a lot yes you have to be uh brilliant prose and if you're doing a graphic novel, you don't have to have brilliant prose. You have to have brilliant ideas, and mm. the rest will take care of it. But less is more. Uh, it's always less is more. Yep. I always yep. wanted Scott Snyder to just cut. Well, I mean, Dracula not being in the Dracula story that much. How about this guy named Sauron, you know, yeah. who yeah. really wasn't around at all? Uh, but it was just. Do, you know, it's funny you mention that because I think of the Lord of the Rings a lot while I'm doing it because there's so much there that works that as a kid i i was i should have been disappointed soren doesn't finally show up and say some evil stuff and do evil things he never does yet that he was the best villain ever yeah and then you realize when you get older and now i'm going in a rabbit hole so forgive me <laughs> uh but then you get you go uh, and you begin to realize evil gets more effective as it gets smaller in tolkien so the Nazgul actually get a lot more done than Soren does. And then you you get down to Gollum, who does the most damage of mm. anyone, and he's this little dude, and he's small, right? He, he His worst, most evil or base desires that he can't control thwarts Soren. Thwarts the West, thwarts everyone, though it works out for us. He's the last. And they foreshadow it, too. They foreshadow, you know, Elrond foreshadows that, you know. Yeah, it, it's, and, but it's brilliant. But as a kid, I should be disappointed that here I'm following Frodo for three damn books, which was a lot for a 12-year-old boy to go through. And he says, eh, I can't do it. I, yeah. I'm, I'm not going to do it anymore. I'm keeping it. And I mm -hmm. remember the gasp. I remember that going, no. I mean, No. And then it ends with, God, oh, it's wonderful. It's you, so good. You, you do. And the most you get of Soren is he becomes a little cloud that blows away. Mm -hmm. You know? Uh, I, your I, imagination I, does the rest. It, yes. uh, and and Tolkien knew that. A lot of great writers know that, that the well, reader no can fill in the blanks. To, there's no. no way to live up to that. And he did a great job of his, he's pervasive through the whole thing. And in that world, you know, Sauron is is second fiddle to somebody who's much worse. Yeah. In the from the past, you know, yeah. which is like we can't even conceive. Yeah. Again. And then, and you can even say Sauron was more effective than Morgoth because he yes. corrupted the Numenorians and he brought down the 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 very cream of humanity. He destroys. So each well, there was rebel, a tempest in him. You see. Yes. It just. Yeah. <laughs> I can't. I can't it's because it. he was a simp for Guy Ladriel yeah, and he was I upset. I That's... can't tell you how much I enjoyed it. <laughs> but but that that none of that matters to when you're reading it, you know? You're just you're just totally swept spoilers. away. Um stop it. <laughs> Spoil <laughs> yeah. somebody said spoilers in the chat. You're funny. There's gotta be a spoiler law. We need to make like the five rules of spoilers, like there's got, and, and one of them has to do with time. If you, if it's a story that's 10 years old, you've had time. You've yeah. had time. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I've had time too. That includes me. You could spoil me. Yeah. And so like people were spoiling the hell out of one piece for me, like way down the road. Wait till you get to this thing. I'm like, okay. Uh, but that's, <laughs> that's life as a, as a comic shop owner, that happened to me all the time. You're under like the, cu shop. the customers would read oh. books faster than I could. I had a pile that yep. I could read the night before that had to be, I had to hand pick it. So it's like 10, 10 or 12 books I can read in a couple hours, unless it's Alan Moore. Well, and, you know. I remember the disaster for when uh, The Empire Strikes Back came out by. Uh -huh, yes. And, and I just didn't go to the store for a week. I just, because they came in. I avoided, I had one other friend who was with me on that. We wanted to go and not have anything there. Uh, we didn't even go with our, our usual group of friends because those idiots would have told us and, you know, 
and we went in and, and had that experience, but you have to work your ass off not to have a spoiler. Oh, I was young and impulsive, Kelly. So I went straight to that book and read the whole damn thing. I'm like, let's go. <laughs> well, I, I would say, I would say now, or even maybe a few years later, I would because Al Williams, Williamson drew it. And I only found that out when I got the book. Cause then I went and got the book. And Yoda looked a lot different. You're like, wait a minute. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, but man, it was depending on which version you got. Yeah, it was a gorgeous book. Do you guys remember the hype for Harry Potter spoilers when those books would drop? People would be yeah. like reading oh, them in yeah. the store, desperately trying to find out what was going to happen. Oh, yeah, but he's like, I'm getting off the internet. Uh, and I just I said, Oh, no, uh, th that's the best one. A, a customer comes in and he's a dude, uh, in tears, in tears. I'm like, What's the matter? And I thought it was like a family member died. I'm like, You okay? So Dumbledore's dead. Dumbledore and I'm like, I didn't read it yet. And Snape <laughs> killed him. <laughs> who, like, what? Who? Uh, no. Who? No. Who? Uh, so that, that shit happened to me all the time. Yeah. And I was like, whatever. Yeah. You know, well, look, I can story's live. Story's still good. I can live. You know, th this thing about being up, uh, upset with uh, modern stuff. I was with Return of the Jedi. I mean, I remember. That's for Perry, by the way. Sorry. Uh, Please I, I got upset because I had after after the end of Empire, I had it in my head what was going to happen and who was who and what was what. And then it didn't happen. Um, the other wasn't Leia. It was Boba Fett. He was the other. Um, and everyone would say, how can they? Oh, it is, you know, that, but no, it was I. he's the Green Knight. He's in green. Um, now my poor wife's going, oh, he's going to do the Boba Fett thing. But um, no, he he's the only guy that. Uh, Vader's whacking everybody in it, but he respects Boba Fett, and yeah, you'll be honored. So the uh, the idea, and that's that's where the myth of Boba Fett came from. Right, a cool costume and like being shown respect from Darth Vader. That's right. where it, and, and we're like, wasn't, who's he, this guy? And you know, he wasn't He's talking evil. shit to him. Yeah, he, he wasn't evil yet. He was he was separate from because he knew how to find Han Solo, and Vader couldn't. Yeah. Right. He was not evil yet. So he was still using it. And then he knew exactly where he was. All he wanted was his money. Mm -hmm. Right. He was he had given up on the world. And that was Luke's thing is the return of the Jedi wasn't to be Luke. It was to be Boba Fett is the Jedi who returns. And That's he's the one is. that they convince to come on in the fight because Luke couldn't have fought Vader on his own. I got good news oh. for you. They made a whole TV show for Boba Fett. Yeah, they <laughs> did. Yeah, they did. Well, it's why. Hey, do you ever want to see Vespas in Star Wars? So, uh... so you can see why I checked out a long time ago because I was like, going, you know, here's a guy. Luke sneaks in <laughs> to the Cloud City, and who waits for him? Boba Fett. He knows he's there, and he, you know, he he knows what Luke is. Right. It's Luke not convincing Vader to be good again. It's convincing Boba to get back into the fight. And that's the that's then there's two. Right. Oh, where are the Ewoks? Well, <laughs> you can imagine my disappointment when I walked out three years. ago. <laughs> I waited for that that moment where, you know, they they he goes and, you know, frees Han and then he has to have this fight with with Boba Fett, which he's going to lose, but he convinces him through his character and his, you know, all those great things of Luke soften Boba Fett. That was going to happen. It's the green Knight. The green Knight wasn't on one side or the other. Oh, yeah. Great story. Right. Great story. And that... That's why he's in green. It's well, that's what have been, that would have been, uh, all right. I love it Return is... of the Jedi, but it's half a bad movie. And it is a lot of disappointment. It's half 10 out of 10. And I it's still half a watch bad movie. it. I still watch so it. So do I. And in my head, I play out the other scene in my head. But that's. So at know, the end, love, then, does uh, Boba Fett turn to Luke and say, so right, that's then, great. Off dude, with your dude, head. Dude, <laughs> leaving, leaving out Luke constructing his lightsaber is still stupid. Like, yeah, George went back and did the special editions and he didn't put that in. It's like, bro. Yeah. That, that, I think like, I think what happened was uh, uh, they got spooked in Empire to and what made me think of it, Gary, was the thing where you said about spoilers. I think they were seeing people say that they were saying clearly you don't spend all this time on a bounty hunter and then he's not going to have anything to do with it. Yeah, uh, it, you yeah. don't you don't play up the, the romantic triangle, which is Arthurian. 
and yes. then have it be his sister. I mean, no one with a sister could go see that movie. And I mean, uh, the shock, you know, and you're a Jedi. So that all stuff was stuck on after after the fact. Um, and and I always felt that they became very aware. Oh man, they're all going to guess it. They're all going to figure it out. And and I, there was a knee jerk reaction. Yeah, they can't worry about that. No, because the Westworld. Yes, because when it, you oh, go absolutely. through it, when you go through the story, it doesn't matter if you know what it is. I no, it doesn't matter. You're 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 going through it. It's just wonderful. Dude, that's why George is spinning his wheels with yeah. a song of ice and fire. He's so worried about the ending of 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 when uh, <laughs> he of should be Game of Thrones buried. and yeah. the and the theories. And uh, you got to like as a creator, you you know what? I, I'll just put it to something I know. Sorry, folks. Yeah. YouTube. Yeah. If somebody makes a video on a subject, I'm making a video on. I don't give a shit. Well, I, I always care. loved yeah, I always I, loved I, Tolkien. Tolkien, out of respect to his publishers who stuck by him for 10 years, said, okay, I'll try to write a sequel. He wrote one chapter and said, this ain't going to work. It stinks. Yep. And that was the end of it. That was the end and of it. That was Thank the end God. of it. And I always respected that. I always thought, yeah, you can't tell a good story after what it's the end of times um, and the beginning of new ones. And in his lore, we're in those new ones, right? We, so, we are. We're part of that. Uh, yeah. yeah. It, this was supposed to be a a a, uh, a mythology for England. That's exactly yes. what it was that was lost. Yes. You know, with because you know the English just let themselves get invaded all the time. That's what uh, they do. Um, yeah. Anglo Saxons could not get along. That's Don't right. look at me. I'm New Zealander. <laughs> oh, now now you're. Hey, great police force you have up there. I saw Frost. Uh, it's pepper She's spraying back. people. She's back. She's back. Epispring people. people. Well, yeah, yeah. Frost went there and then remember arrested a young uh, autistic girl for saying uh, she looked like what she was uh, a lesbian nana, and which um, is trending on Twitter. What? Lesbian <laughs> nana that. is trending on Twitter. <laughs> I saw that. So now she's back and she was freaking out and pepper spraying stuff. And I'd say that'd be the first time I'd be really grateful the cops don't have guns because she would have straight up <laughs> shot. Uh, we can we can actually have a quick little. look. Okay, how she still has a job, I don't know. She oh might God. she might not by tomorrow. By the way, I'm more concerned about what happens right at the end of this video. Uh, I'll show you in a second. Dude, you can tell she wants a machine gun that sprays. Look at her. That is that she's spray. not cut out to be a police officer. Not cut out to be a cop. Wait. Why has it got a child? Because they can't hire anybody. I mean, who, <laughs> would, be, there a child? who would be dumb what? enough to be a cop who can't carry a gun? <laughs> Why is there a child hey, they should a give police me, officer hanging out give, with police? Do they give your cops swords again? Like, do, are you going to bring <laughs> no, back swords? Uh, yeah, you do a little, you make the little gun with your hands, you know? Little, little finger bang. That's how you do I, it. I want to see, I want to go back to the old sheriff of Nottingham. I want Prince yeah. John back in charge. And, and Robin, back. Robin, Robin, we, yeah. Robin, 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 <laughs> Robin. You got to do it better. You do it better than me. <laughs> Direct, Projector X. Projector X. Projector yeah. X, making the rounds. Talk to Mark with the C, dude. I remember, no, his, remember channel, his channel was, was not big enough, remember? He was going to talk to anybody except for Mark with a C because his channel wasn't big enough. <laughs> wow, it's as if he was always hunting for clout. I know, but Mark would uh, Mark would uh, take him to town. De it would destroy him in a debate. Mark with yeah. a C. Well, sub to his channel. It's very good. Uh, we're, we're, we're past 40,000 now, by the way. 41,500, just FYI. Very good. Um, good. Alf Havre. With a ten dollars says, uh, "Have some of Kelly's bat books. He's one of my favorite artists. It was awesome to say, uh, to hear him say that he was friends with Keith too. I imagine that's Keith Griffin. Uh, Sam Keith. Oh, Sam Keith. Okay. Yeah, we 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 known each other since we were sixteen years old. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so that makes the Wolverine and the Max thing uh, make more sense. Yeah. Uh, did you know Keith Griffin at all? No, I only spoke with him one time, and uh, <sighs> it was very brief." And I didn't know him or who he was, but I was mm. sitting with a lot of the people who worked with him and he came up and he was speaking to them. And then I could see, oh, it's Keith Giffen. And I was about to say something and he looked at me and he says, and he saw my tag and he goes, hey, I like what you're doing and walked away. So I didn't get anything more than that. I said, oh, I got to go run up to him because I love Keith Giffen's stuff. I started following, being a fan of his when he was doing Defenders and I think Mike Golden was inking him and they were just, it was fabulous. First time I saw it, I loved it. 
Um, he was one of the few guys who could do a Kirby style, and it was his own. Um, <clears throat> and he evolved from that point on. But uh, I really liked his stuff. And, you know, here it was. I had sent a note a few days before I he had obviously passed. Uh, mm. I'd seen him in a post, and I'd sent a thing saying how much I loved his work. Oh. <clears throat> but um, it shocked me when that happened. He was, he was something else. He was a yeah. legitimately original independent voice yeah i was just i perfectly he's just that, league international that, for me was just so well lobo i mean yeah, lobo. lobo creates creates of lobo. Lobo. I mean, lobo is the most annihilation uh lobo is the most iconoclastic character out of that period and it wasn't by alan moore or frank miller it was keith giffen who who did it you know um mm -hmm. it, wonderful uh yeah he he, uh, he, he was he, his his style is perfectly lent itself to comics and it was uh mm -hmm. it, and it was uh, i pre whedon esque right still yeah. had a very good mix of levity uh that can get serious and very serious. Uh, uh yeah, yeah very very and, serious. and really set the tone especially in annihilations for guardians of the yeah. galaxy yes. later on something yep. like that that he didn't get any credit for um but yeah when i read that justice league book okay uh, um this was back in my homeless days so i was stealing it from a grocery store to read it basically under a tree <laughs> but nice. uh it, god i love those fucking books so much man uh and it was all during the batman resurgence yeah and uh it was such a great time yeah. to be a dc a, a comic reader but yeah i agree a dc agree. reader in those in the 80s leading up to to, to freaking batman uh coming out it was it was a good time for comics man yeah go back and read those if you haven't uh Boy, good, as is not wrong good stuff. that is good stuff is it the best justice league run <gasps> um my favorite it's my, my favorite. personal favorite it's my yeah. personal favorite too uh i i always take anything that brings you in that you aren't following and then you start following it um yeah um i i never even i, I started collecting in 92 uh, and you know, and, and because of just reading and getting into all characters, I started to branch out to more more characters. And then when I started to go into back issues and going through all the Batman back issues, and then discovering Brave and the Bold because of that, and then Brave and Bold sort of took me onto other areas like yeah. Green Arrow. Uh, going and and so I can remember the the it was a market stall comic book shop, not the one that I started it, it, in a completely different part of the country. And he was just like selling these. He had no idea the, the you know price of comics. He just had the shit ton of comics. It was just like, what do you want? Pick out, and then he'll just sort of like count and go, uh, I don't know, uh, fiver. And you go, yeah, all right. Yeah. And um, I just I just saw the, the Justice League, and I saw Batman on the cover when they were doing the smaller, you know, when they have the smaller group to start with. I was like, Batman, okay, let's pick this up. So I just grabbed, you know, a few. A, few issues of that bought them for not a lot took them back and then i was just it just took me into a completely different dimension yeah. with guy gardner and blue beetle and and booster gold and fire and ice and maxwell lord and martian manhunter and i just fell in love with all those characters based off uh keith giffen's writing for that and and it, yeah it, it, it's it's amazing where you just you're picking it up for one thing and then you stay in because of the, the, just how amazing the writing was the art was superb but every character in that run had such a unique voice and and that was that was unbelievable they had to balance so many so many characters at, at one time uh, and have them all feel unique and different and funny well, and giffen had a great ear and mm. he had a great ear for for dialogue certainly but he also um I think had a great, uh, uh, great ability to handle these very different characters, and they kept their own voices. You know, um, he could he could handle these plots and whatnot beautifully. But when you added those characters in, and they had their own uh, their own say, um, it it made it kind of must reading then because I hadn't seen anything. Oh. Like that. Mm. I hadn't seen anything quite like that. Uh, you've always seen characters bitch and moan back and forth to each other. Um, and certainly the Avengers had that going on with Captain America and Iron Man and the direction of the Avengers in. But nothing like that. 
where it was almost like uh it's after work let's go get a beer kind of character. yeah 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 uh yeah it, it did it felt like being in an like in an office it felt like yeah, being at work it did, it did. You, you you couldn't really control who you're working with yeah uh and you've all got these these you know clash of personalities um and you know you got people fighting for that alpha role oh um, my, my gardener bitching about batman oh, it's always great it was, i mean i i mean i, I don't think <laughs> it's one of the greatest moments of comic books period yes is when guy squares up to batman yeah and he's like, come on, and Batman just one punches him out. Yeah. And and everyone's just like, one punch. Yeah. You know, guy's just in out. And Batman just turns around, walks away. See ya. I'm done. Yeah. It's great. It's like one punch. And he just got one punch. Yeah. That and he was just really good. But it, and then he, but the beauty was he made me love Guy Gardner. Yeah, me too. He me made too. me love that character. Yes, me too. And that's that is the skill of someone as creative as Giffen was. Yeah. Giffen, Giffen was not a guy who uh, was a comic book guy in that sense. He could do it and he liked it and he went away from it and then he came back. Mm. Um, so he had a great perspective when he came in of kind of do whatever he wanted and not in some arrogant fashion, but in like, I better do this while I can still see it. He just mm -hmm. didn't know. He just didn't know how entertaining he was to his editors. You know, <laughs> his editors were loving it every bit as much as the fans were. But I just, I loved every character. I don't think it was a character. I didn't I mean? I particularly loved Guy Gardner. I particularly loved Maxwell Lord. I thought yeah. his, his Maxwell Lord stuff was incredible. Yeah, Batman was that. used like so sparingly. Yes. and then he was, then he pretty much was out. Yeah. you know, and not after after twenty odd issues anyway. Yeah, uh, Fire and Ice yeah. together with with Blue Beetle and Booster Gold were just. I would watch, I would read the shit out of a series yeah. that was that was written by Keith Giffen that just had those four characters. Yeah. I'd read the shit out of it all day, every day. Yeah. Um, you know, Shazam was very had a very unique personality, very kind of Billy Batson, but in Shazam form. Yeah. Martian Manhunter, very yeah, stoic. Was, but, I love but he, he, Yeah, he's just his uh, his Oreo fascination was yeah. just like perfect. Uh, Alan Alan Grant used to laugh because he said uh He'd get he'd get the stuff in from from Keith on what they were going to do, mm. and he said he really had to sit down and ferret it all out. And at first he didn't understand it, and then by the time he's done, he went, "This is brilliant, right?" It would it was that's how different he was. And um, uh, I always used to say, and I and I asked Alan that. I go, "Well, you're a professional too." He says, "Yeah, but this guy was speaking in such his own voice." It was pure comics, but it was just so different. Yeah, and and he completely was. It, it actually worked really great when they when they both worked together on Lobo. It was, it was fabulous. And then you bring in Simon, and it's just it's pure gold. Man, ah, oh, those good ones. Yep. Uh, thoughts on the fitness with Nigel with a five pound? Says I worked in a comic book shop in the late eight, uh, 70s and eighties. The name drops are priceless, Kelly. When you said. Tearing the boxes open on delivery day. Oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. That was a big deal when the guy would come in on the dolly and, and you know, the the, the delivery guy. Mm. And they would deliver. And um, later on, the store I had actually got their own delivery. But that was exciting when the UPS guy come and he bring the boxes in. And oof, I, I made a point to be good friends with those guys so I could be in there in the back rooms when yeah, they were yeah. opening them. You know? <laughs> I still see them for lunch all the time. These they're all, you know, they're all retired now. Yeah. But uh same thing, same way we're talking. They uh, everyone's still talking that way. God. Just uh. Mm -hmm. uh falling outside the normal moral constraints with a five dollar says I used to find Kelly's style off putting. Yes. But it over is. the past couple of years, I've really come to love it. Great stream. What a cool dude. Yeah, you won him over. Well, yeah. I have had two really terrific editors in my career that said something like that. Mm. And they said it, it absolutely as, you know, it, I take that as, as the highest form of compliment because it means they gave you a chance. It means they, it, it probably means they understand there's some thinking behind it, not just trying to be a, you know, batshit crazy or something. You're just trying to tell something, you know, the way you see it. And, um, 
And I remember both in two separate times, the editor saying, you know, after I worked for him a while, both saying, can I tell you something? And they would start telling them this story. And I know one was afraid of offending me. And he even goes so far as to say, well, when I moved, he lived in New York then. He says, when I moved, um, the place I moved to, I really wanted to go to. It was over this pizza parlor, but there were no, it wasn't an elevator. So I had to carry my, I knew I'd have to carry books. I got rid of most of my collection, but I kept yours. <laughs> I, I, I still lug those up there. So I love you. I love you. And I go, no, that's great. I, it's, it's, again, it's, it's, it's the best thing to hear when somebody says they give you a chance. They weren't great. They didn't know, mm. it's, it, you know, um, the hardest thing for me to hear is I, 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 as I realize now, I was that different. I didn't think of it then at all. I didn't. I, I didn't I, yeah. To me, you were out of the box. Yeah, I just completely never, out of the box, and it, in a beautiful, wonderful way. Uh, it was just that I was raised on seventies uh, Marvel, DC, Warren comics, uh, mm -hmm. heavy metal. I saw, you know, you saw everything then. So you didn't think. I didn't think I particularly stood out that much. And I'm like, and how naive am I? Uh, but I was, <laughs> I, I was thrown in with a group of guys and mm -hmm. they were just so much fun to be around. It was a great, a great stable of, of creative talent then. Oh, man. Oh, Kelly, I could listen to you all day, mate. Uh, Super Base of the $10 says, Hey, Kelly, shout out from the six, uh, from the 916. Go Kings. That's, that's my people. That's your people. That's my people. What do you mean, you people? Uh, 916. We're the 916. Uh, drunk 3PO. Never heard of it. <laughs> the $10 says, Hail Kelly Jones. Loved your work from the uh, Alien Dark Horse series. One of my favorites. Yeah, yeah. I got I got some of your yeah. uh, Alien Dark Horse stuff as well. Um, let's have a look. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. I think those are pretty much the ones that have got you. Okay. Acting. So, folks, because we are running up against the clock, let's share this again. Boom. Uh, Kelly, start, uh, Kelly Jones's Kickstarter campaign for Dracula, Volume 1, The Impaler, written by Matt Wagner, drawn by Kelly Jones. Um, Kickstarter now. The link, pinned link, will take you directly uh, to this Kickstarter campaign. Forty-two and a half thousand dollars. You're on already. Wow, wow. Forty-two and a half thousand. And, he, and he, it went live, folks, an hour before this stream started. So, doing all right. That's could that's be, could, amazing. Could be worse. Uh, I'm, I'm. That's amazing. I <laughs> and he just hit five hundred backers as well. Five hundred one yeah. backers. So. That's that is uh, amazing. Absolutely phenomenal. Uh, this is the. Do you, should we watch the video? Let's have a watch of the video again, because it's really good. It is said that history is memory enshrined. Some might claim entomb, for history belongs to the bold, the victorious, those who are ravenous for power, no matter the cost. A craving I have manifested for centuries. I am such hunger incarnate. And this, the history that I have won against countless enemies and across a thousand blood-drenched battlefields. For I am the son of the dragon, Dracula. Bram Stoker's classic novel created arguably the most famous character in all of literature. Yet it leaves many aspects of Dracula's history and persona only hinted at, and thus incredibly intriguing and mysterious. This series of books will fill in these tantalizing gaps and provide a more complete and terrifying portrait of one of the most popular literary characters of all time. He had come to me with this great horror idea, stuff I had never thought of, never seen, and I love Dracula, I love vampire lore. Our collaboration here is the culmination of our longtime friendship an incredible synthesis of our two lengthy and accomplished careers in comics. The joy of working on it is absolutely on every page, every panel. This isn't yet another retelling of the novel in comics form. We're bringing you the never before told stories behind the story, the sinister tales hidden in the shadows of the original legend. 
the heart of Dracula, blood that flows in his veins. It's as much in telling a story as the blood he spills. And in this, he spills a lot. I'm not exaggerating when I say that this project is the magnum opus, everything we might have hoped it could be. This is the journey of my brutal life and bloody undeath down through the centuries. The stories never seen. To defeat the godless, one must become godless. Dracula, book one, The Impaler. Damn, Kelly, that just looks absolutely fantastic. I might have to back that. Yeah. Yeah. I already have. I have too. So you, you, need up, to, you need to get your finger out, mate. You know? Yeah. yeah. Get off, piss or get off the pot. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, dude. <laughs> oh, absolutely beautiful. I, again, I love this. Oh. Thank you. Oh, I love that. I love all of that. Big time. Yeah, so we've got the digital tier. Uh, we've got the hard uh, hardcover tier with either uh, your cover and then the uh, Matt, uh, Wagner variant cover, uh, or you can get both together. Then we have the six 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 copies of the limited edition hardcover tier, which seem to be flying off the shelf. The limited edition folio and hardcover, and then we have the limited edition hardcover and folio. There's the big one. Yeah, there you go. There's Matt, and there's. Kelly, look at them looking like they should be in a in police lineup. Yeah, them. yeah, absolutely. Well, Matt looks yeah, more this like man. A, Matt looks more like uh like a Bond villain kind of guy, you know. Yes, I kind expect like, you uh, to play oligarchs. Yes. Uh, so the link pinned link will take you directly to the Kickstarter campaign when the. Uh, stream ends i will put the link into the description box so if you're watching this back on replay and like ah, it's in the description box down below so go click it uh go click it yeah so that right yeah. go click it go support it it's doing phenomenally well considering it's only been out for uh just under four hours yeah. at uh 43 and a half thousand dollars already that is incredible mate uh so before we go gary uh anything you'd like to plug mate are we going? <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're, we're coming up to the three hour mark. Well, I'm taking oh, it that the goodbyes are going to take a few minutes, you know, to take All right. Uh I just put out a video. <laughs> I know it doesn't feel like it's long for you, Gary, because you fucked off halfway through the stream. But yeah, you know. Uh, I'm sorry. Mm. Uh, oh, let's talk about your video, Gary. What video? Uh, um, I just put out a video about... Uh, the Film Actors Guild strike uh, that's still going on uh, and how it's going, it's uh, not going well. So uh, we'll basically, uh, everybody's going to, basically the videos, everybody's claiming victory, but uh, production's down almost half in LA and future productions will be halved, halved, not Aww. just slightly reduced, halved. And they've got nothing to put out. And it looks like theaters will probably be halved as well Ew. over the next oh. two years. And that's, that's the, that's the bad part. Yeah. I like that movie is. theaters Me too. and, uh, local productions and it, and it might just scatter to the four winds and become, uh, it'll always be there, but, uh, maybe, uh, or, or it'll just be run by Amazon and Apple until they get bored of it. But, uh, yeah, take a look at the video. Thanks. Um, I also, read this book well listen to it but uh uh then i thumbed through and found uh things that are very interesting about uh the mcu Ooh. so uh i i would recommend the book kindle i don't think you have to go out and get the hardcover but uh it uh i i gave a quick review on twitter and i'd saved the the best descriptions it's a lot like the mcu it started out pretty good and uh, as soon as it got to Captain Marvel, it went to shit. <laughs> Same with the book. <laughs> but you gonna do any uh, videos on the book? Uh, probably, and it'll. And, but it's probably going to be criticizing the author for missing eighty-five uh, percent of what went wrong with Phase Four. They got some of it, mm -hmm. but Phase Four could have been uh, like this book could have been longer. So it, I think it it kind of depended on, it feels like they ended the book like a year ago, maybe eight months ago. 
and they could have maybe should have waited <laughs> a little bit because they'd have a lot more. But as you put it, Mahler, it really does. When you have a book called The Reign of the MCU, it feels like something's over, doesn't it? Yeah, because oh, the yeah. reign's not finished, is it? And it's like, well, <laughs> I think so. Well, considering the review embargo for the Marvels and the... Uh, okay, uh, let me clarify again. The social media embargo ends midnight prior to its release. The review embargo ends one hour before the film is released. Mm. That's so, a I, good sign. Good sign. I, 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 it's a great, <laughs> great sign. Movie. And I heard from somebody uh, definitely in the know that this was the, the worst. Uh, it tested the worst out of any MCU film by far. Uh, this shouldn't surprise anybody. Well, so, that's the funny thing is, of course, it tested the worst on all the different edits of <laughs> on all the different edits, and they've cut out what almost forty five minutes of time the, after I, I, yeah. after three reshoots, three major uh, reshoots. The, the latest, yeah, the latest screener to go around Disney, and this is one hundred percent because this is coming from somebody within. It's a hundred. Yeah, this is yeah, this is one hundred percent. The latest screener was eighty eight minutes long. That was the late of the of the actual film. Obviously, you're going to have credits on the credits. end and, and whatnot, but the actual film was 88 minutes long, and that That's might what be a, mercy. That might be a bit too long, to be honest. And the with you. and the 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 line that they were saying was, "We need to skate fast over thin ice." Yeah, yeah that's well, they that's, need to move past the marvels as soon as possible. Yeah, without falling in, because if they hover, they're going to. If it, well, you, there's. Interesting quotes really quick. Uh, there was uh, Kevin Feige stated that uh, a, a reboot. I'm, I'm paraphrasing what he said. We would never reboot this universe. It would be a failure <laughs> if I did that. Okay? Uh, That's well, one of his quotes. Gary, they were also talking after, Ms. <laughs> after the Marvels of how the hell do we get Chris Evans and Robert Downey Jr. back? And we need to get out this storyline quickly so we can reboot the whole fucking thing. Uh, they were. Uh, or, OK, that quote comes from like 10 years ago, by the way, from Kevin Feige. Um, also, yeah, yeah. Uh, they said, uh, I'm paraphrasing again. One of the producers said, all Marvel characters are just legacy. That's all they are. You can put oh. the mask on anybody. No. Um, also, <sighs> before Bob Iger bought Marvel, he educated himself on it with the Marvel Encyclopedia co Coffee Table book, which I own, uh, which at the time was about 10 years out of date. <laughs> <laughs> when he when he when he read it, so that's fine, yeah. I guess. Uh, but to show you like how much actual effort goes into these huge deals and stuff, Kelly, you know this. Yeah. You would think like everybody like dots every I, crosses every T. Um, you would also think our senators and congressmen would read all the bills and stuff, and uh, they don't. It's the same in Hollywood. They they just they're very impulsive. They're in charge of a lot of money, and if you ride something that's popular, it makes you look really smart. It's kind of like a coach. You know, you can be a good coach, football coach, real football, American football, uh, but you got to have good players, and you really got to have a good quarterback. Uh, yeah. Belichick will tell you about that right now. Yeah. Uh, you know, Belichick, Belichick was a decent, you know, he would win. He a decent defensive mind, a really good coach, but he needed Tom Brady. He needed Tom mm -hmm. Brady to win those championships. Yep. And, and without him, he ain't winning those championships. So uh, that's that's the reality of, of the entertainment business, too. Uh, and it's become too much of a business. And Kelly's right. You, back when the music industry was doing great, you'd have a bunch of, like, uh, Frank Zappa does a great interview. It's classic yeah. of the the guy, the old guy chomping on a cigar going, I don't understand it, but it's making me money. You yeah. know, that's like, let's go. Yeah. We need more of that and yeah. more eccentric. And they've gotten rid of eccentric artists, Kelly. Robert Evans. I want my Robert Evans. Yeah. Yeah. Well, me too. What Love yeah. or hate Joss Whedon. He's got horrible political takes, but he was just a, you know, he was just a meanie on the set. So they canceled him for it. A big old meanie. Big old meanie on the set. Well, so is James Cameron. That's why James Cameron has really changed his tune lately because that guy was horrible on the set. A freaking, but nobody cares. He was a tyrant. He wasn't, but he was indiscriminate. He'd yell at anybody. You know, that's, the, that's kind of the, the deal. The, it was famously the Aliens crew being British, never wanted to work with them again after that. Yeah. Um, yep. And I think you have to apologize to them as well. Hang on. <laughs> 
<laughs> Sorry. See, you're Ryan at double speed right there. My <laughs> phone just like. Now we know how you watch so many. I was watching, no, yeah, no, I was reviewing. Device. I'll have you know I was reviewing uh, only quartering videos. Do I do double speed? On I was reviewing my own video on double speed because I had seen it already like about 10 times and then mm -hmm. I recorded it. So I did, really don't want to hear myself at normal speed. Good, mm. good, uh, good shout. Good. Molly, Molly. Anything. Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, by the way, Molly, I, I don't yeah. like call you out on stream. Oh, Ooh, I but do. next time, can you at least let some of us get a word in edgewise? Tone it down. <laughs> Hey, Ma a, Mahler. The one thing to understand is I'm like the little baby when you three start talking about comic stuff. I'm just like, oh my god, look at all this. It's like when, they do, when you two start inside. talking about gaming, I I just that's I, the only, I could I be like right up and talk about movies I, or games. My last video game was Destroy All Humans. Oh wow, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> I remember that game. one. Yeah. Game, though. No, my no? kid my kid played that one. Yeah, yeah. The, with with crypto. Yeah, there were I, many more. I'll say in the chat, there were many people asking for a well welfare check on you. A well, wellness well, check. Am, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Welfare I, check. Hey, I hey you want to get him talking? Once in a while to make talk, sure. talk about House of Usher. Talk about House of Usher. Or I Buffy. Mean, wait, well, wait, Gary, have you continued it? Or? No, but I did like the first episode enough to, to continue it, and I will continue it. Because uh, I, I, I just got so back yesterday. So. Help me figure out if we should recommend it to Az or not. Uh, the, as there's a suspicious amount of gay couples in the first episode, I'll just say that. <laughs> but uh, other than that, I mean, but it's a billionaire family, and it kind of makes sense with a bunch of entitled kids of an, a billionaire family to be and all I a bunch of fucking weirdos. It, it, so. uh, yeah, and Poe's story, they're all weird. I Not, mean, okay. are weirdos. Not to get <laughs> misquoted there. All right. Uh, but three gay couples in a family is just, it's breaking the odds. We're just saying it's breaking the odds, unless you're a billionaire family, uh, <laughs> where I don't think it is. So there you go. We'll see once you, uh, finish up the season. Yeah. I, I, right now I'm at a definite, not sure if as would like it, but it's, yeah. uh, it, it's, uh, it did something. It's very succession-y. Mm -hmm. but it has ghosts which makes me interested way more oh, interested in it than the regular show <laughs> maybe a dracula so. who knows yeah 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 uh as for what's going on with me uh this month we've been doing that the spooky arc of going through all the saw movies free fat movies and uh today we're on the first attempt at rebooting the saw franchise from i think 2011 or something or 13 i can't remember when they did it but it was called jigsaw and it oh. failed, or at least didn't do as well as they wanted. And then they tried to reboot it again with Spiral, starring Chris Rock. I don't even know if you guys know about this. And then that failed real bad. And then they rebooted it again, like the beginning of this month, with Saw 10. I say reboot. What I mean is, like, it's a sequel, but it's a, an attempt to get the yeah, franchise yeah, yeah, running yeah. again. It's a requel. Requel, that's a good way to put it, yeah. Um, so, yes, we're checking out the first of the three attempts at redoing the Saw franchise. And looking forward to hitting that uh i think it's october 30th we'll be checking out saw 10. sar so what's sar sar saw, not sar saw he's a saw. saw uh i just want to do why don't you go uh, ahead and say horror for us gary yeah Shut up. Horror, horror, <laughs> horror 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 <laughs> yeah. who are you calling a whore you so what i am I am what I am. Guilty as charged. Um, before we get to Kelly, just want to do uh, three uh, big old super chats. Fear the Tardo with a fifty <laughs> with a fifty dollar <laughs> says hi Jazz Reggie Reggie and Mama love show but have <laughs> questions. <laughs> How name pronounced is pronounced Bibikik? What Bibikik? <laughs> What not real bibber kick? Can bibber kick make hot caca leave underpants? <laughs> yes. Where's sex paid girl? <laughs> oh, uh, Kelly, you're regretting coming on this she, show yet? <laughs> she drink lot and fall down. Lock it in, yay. Sex paid girl. Sex paid girl. <laughs> That's fucking brilliant. <laughs> no! uh, that one's gonna stick dude <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna call it sex paid girl from now on baron casa with a 50 dollars says micronauts were the toys and stories that got me into comics and i loved your work 
on the new Voyagers. Yes. Thank you for your contributions on my favorite comic of all time. And that was Baron uh, Kaz's first Baron. ever super chat on the channel as well. So massive thank you for that one. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Fear the Tardo. Oh, no. With another $50. No, this is hundred dollars <laughs> for this boy. <laughs> says hi reggie love your channel nerdaholic you have tattoos tato like tattoos Aww. get tattoos out of vending machine and stick on skin but tattoos go away buy more tattoos still go away why tato's tattoos go away but reggie's not lock it in yay <laughs> <laughs> I bought the I I bought the high class ones, the the go to the golden vending. Machine. I went to the golden vending machine. You're right, Raw. <laughs> dude. Not only do I get fifty bucks, I got a freaking good laugh out of it as well. This is dude. amazing. Yeah, Fear Kelly! Guitardo wins. Kelly, Kelly, Kelly. Obviously, we have the link is pinned at the top of yeah. the stream chat. We have uh, the Dracula. Uh, when are we looking at book two? Mm. Um, about halfway through it. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow, wow, wow. Yeah. And it's, and, and it's actually a bigger story. This one ooh. is about 100. This one's about 20, 30 pages more. And this, this one's 119, is it? Yeah, it's, it's a biggie. Th Oof. These are, these are uh, they're big boys, yeah. Damn. Anything else that you'd like to... Uh, yeah, to, that's, to you stay? know... I've got some other things like you're not allowed to talk about, but I'm I'm a busy I'm a busy guy. Oh, thank God. <laughs> we need people like you to be busy. So chat, if you haven't already backed it, Dracula Volume One, The Impaler, Matt Wagner, Kelly Jones, link pinned in the uh, the top of the chat, or if you're watching on replay, the link is in the description box down below. Uh, after four hours, you're up to. 46 just over 46,000. I can't which is absolutely sensational. I, yeah. Uh tomorrow I will be on Eric July's channel 7:30 UK time as uh Eric and I will be starting our ongoing Wednesday show. Mm. What's the name? Um we are not committing to the name right now. We've got an idea for it. The graphics person's doing the graphics. Tomorrow, we're just going to do the stream. And then maybe the week after, we're going to be bouncing between channels. So it's on Eric's channel tomorrow. Then the week after, be on mine, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, yeah, we've got, an, we've got an idea for a name. The graphics are in the in the works. But we'll we'll, we'll just, you know, hang fire in case things change. Well, um, but, uh, really it'll be coming soon. Yeah, but that'll be uh, an, ongoing, an ongoing show. Want to do it nice and concise? Two hours. Two hours in hour. Two hours Never in and sure. the power of chat naming the show. I'm just saying, just putting it out there. No, oh. I, I'm yeah. Mm. I need the chat for something. Uh, and uh, Alan Wake two on Friday, Whoa. Saturday looks like some more uh, party animals with a bigger group. Maybe some other people. Me, I can't say who, just in case they don't. But maybe someone else, maybe some other people as well. I wasn't um, invited. No, no, you were. You, fuck off, Gary. I wasn't invited. <laughs> just fuck off. It's all right. I'll hang out with Mahler. It's all right. yeah. yeah, that's why I'm not buying this because you were going to fucking anyway. Do what? Hang out with Mahler. Yeah. Yeah. But you could have invited. Do you me do the time. secret mall project, <laughs> or do you do party animals? No, you're going to do the secret mall project. I don't know what the secret mall project. project is. It's a secret, by the way, and it's don't secret. get excited, people, because you won't see it until fucking <laughs> nine twenty. We can watch in nineteen. I hope you see it before. <laughs> Yeah, when, yeah, time machines time when we go all the way, way around we, when we go. cycle through <laughs> yeah. time again because we each just relive our lives until we get them all perfect that's that's yes. it so that that second you know, yeah uh so massive thank you to everyone who came to watch today by the way if you did do a super chat and it didn't get read out i'll be doing a super chat square up sunday where i'll be going through them and i can give them the time that you deserve 
Thank you so much indeed for that, for supporting the channel. To everyone who, uh, everyone who watched, thank you so much. Mods, thank you so much indeed uh, for giving it your free time and effort. Uh, everybody who did Super Chat, member, gift memberships, remember, thank you for supporting. Kelly, it's been an absolute pleasure thank uh, you. to have you on again. You're welcome back anytime. Hell yeah, it, Kelly. It, it's, it's just gone like that yeah, for me I did today. Yeah, well. um, it, it Wonderful conversation. And, and my God... I think I've OD'd on common sense today, and I haven't done that for a long time. It's all right. We'll Especially just go back. To... With that. Hmm? What? I'm sorry. What? 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 Hey. Huh? Hey. I fucking what? heard that. You don't hear that. shit, you deaf fuck. <laughs> I'm I'm blind. I'm not deaf. Okay. You're both. A little you're bit. Like, but you're, 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 like, you're like that fucking pinball wizard. Yeah. Okay. The ageism here is just too much to handle sometimes. Okay. Does he have the really tall uh, high heel boots? Does his Gary does? Yeah, yeah, hell yeah. Yeah, but I just wear those around the house. <laughs> I mean, I don't but wear them he outside. sure plays a mean pinball. I do. We'll be back next week over on Gary's channel. Until then, you take care. Bye, Balubu. Bye. Bye.